I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Muhammad Al Banna. There is a fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, so excited for two things: to know how much is there. <laughs> <laughs> we are really sorry to tell you that today is your last day. What? There is. <laughs> I'm a Libran as well. All right. So what you know days? what I'm talking about. It worked very nice for the first year. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see his name and your mo and your phone. It's not good. You're news. fired. When you buy one, you get nine. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to God, <laughs> it was you know like. Great yeah, story, huh? Business yeah. card. Dennis Whiteley, the author of the best-selling book, The Psychology of Winning, and a guest contributor on The Secret, said that if you're not networking, you're not working. It was Peter Drucker, the father of modern management, who also said, more business decisions occur over lunch and dinner than any other time, yet no MBA courses are given on the subject. So it's befitting to have my guest here today. A man who is a huge proponent on the importance and value that comes from networking and the lead-on effect it could have on your success. My guest grew up as the middle child in an Emirati household. By his teenage years, he had become aware of the power of saving and giving. He got his MBA from the Middlesex University of Dubai. He did his internship at ABN AMRO, then worked for a few years at RackBank before joining Amlac Finance, which he fondly refers to as his school because of the valuable learning and the growth he experienced during his tenure. Prior to his current role, he was the Senior Director of International Ventures for the private office of Sheikh Saeed bin Ahmed Al Maktoum. Today, he is the CEO and Managing Director of Lead Ventures, the office of Sheikh Sultan bin Abdullah Al Qasimi. My guest is a Libra who, like myself, doesn't tiptoe around. He doesn't do it, or if he does, he will jump in with both feet. He has a keen interest in the real estate, banking, technology, and automotive sectors. But it's much deeper than that. He has a deeper attentiveness to people, networking, and building relationships. The ripple effects of which leads naturally to long-lasting friendships, opportunities, and business deals. I have no doubt you will pick up on him saying this during our conversation, that contacts bring contracts in their different shapes and forms. My guest is a husband and father of two beautiful princesses. He is holistic in his way of living, not just focused on business, but actually spending time with the people he cares about, his family and friends. He leads both by example and empowering others. He has the ability to share large ideas in a way that is palatable to understand and follow. And he has always had this insatiable hunger and hustle. My guest is sophisticated in his way of thinking, being, and also his elegant sense of style. He exudes goodness. He believes in the power of energy, the law of attraction, and that the world is a reflection of your vibes. This is How Do They Do It. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Muhammad Al Banna. Thank you for coming. Welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you, Kevin. I'm not sure if you know the story. There was an undergraduate student who was studying at Yale, part of his economics paper. He was looking at the American transportation system back then. He looked at it and he goes, oh, it's inefficient. And I think that it can be done better. And part of the thing that he had actually shared was his suggestion that things can be transported small items, important items, can be transported via planes. That paper was graded a C. That C of an idea is today worth close to $50 billion. It's FedEx. When we have ideas as individuals or when it comes to business or in any aspect of our lives, most often, most people have experienced doubt at some level. It's and then it's really how we deal with doubt. Can you take us to a point in time in any aspect of your life where you were doubted? how it made you feel, what you were thinking, and then how did you deliver on that doubt? I believe you all know what happened in 2008 you yes. know, with, the, with the global crisis, right? And uh, me as a person, I'm a big risk taker. 
yes, I do my due diligence. I save part of my investment here and there. Uh, but you know, in, back in 2000, before 2008, it was a great market for real estate. Yes, that's right. And utilizing my skills and in that sector, which is, you know, like dealing with investors, having my own real estate, uh, it made me, you know, like think of why don't I invest? Because, you know, like I used to be like a consultant for many firms. And then I start, you know, like believing that I have to invest myself. And I invested heavily with my business partner, who is my best friend. And we ended up having maybe 12 properties. Mm -hmm. And I was an expert, so I knew when to buy and when to sell. Mm -hmm. And at that time, to be honest, no one was really, really, really smart with all my love and respect to everyone, to all experts. I don't call myself expert at that time. Why? Yeah. Because the market was amazingly fine. You just buy it, flip it within three months. That's right. You make 30, 40%, go to the next, go to the next. Get inspired. Whether you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, the last thing you want to do is blow your budget on accommodation, which is why I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Beyond being price sensitive, what I love about Rove Hotels is the fact that they are a combination of cafe, culture, and just coolness. Even my guests, many of them, when they arrive before we record or after we finish recording the podcast, they actually comment. They go, wow, this place is cool. The vibe is amazing. And it is amazing. So if you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. This episode is brought to you by M Dojo. Whether you're in business or new to business, you need three things a good website, traffic, and being able to convert that traffic into paying customers. That's what MDojo does best. They're able to create for you a functional state-of-the-art website, drive targeted traffic, and put in all the elements needed in order to convert that into paying customers. Isn't that what you want? Of course it is. Give the team at MDojo a call and see how they can help you increase your sales, and profits. Tell them I sent you. Their website, mdojo.co. I remember some people walking in, and by the time they walk out, they could you know, sell whatever they had for an extra 10 or 20%. It was just crazy absolutely, times. Absolutely, absolutely. I also do remember, just to share with you a story, I was in Emirates Towers, enjoying my, my orange juice in the pool, relaxing, and you know, I received a phone call from a friend of mine, and he said, you're not coming to the launch of that uh, project i said no what project is that oh my god it's an amazing project you have to come and invest he, he used to be my colleague so he's not a salesman yes no? i said okay then uh, get me whatever so he said how many do you want i said get me two what is the down payment Sixty thousand for each all right 120 i will i'll transfer the money now it was that was crazy easy. Times, yeah that easy the trust was absolutely phenomenal so this is this is what happened where we start investing 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 um of course like you know like i was doing my again my due diligence i have to do this i have to do that just in case but i didn't think of what might happen yes for the real estate market yes so now in 2008 i had the market you know it's crash yes what do we do that was a very challenging moment mm. for everyone. Yes, Not for absolutely. Me, it's for everyone. Absolutely. To be honest, I had two options, like similar to everyone else. It's either that I take whatever I have, run away. Mm. And this is where, you know, like if you go back to 2008, you will see that there are lots of news that people are leaving their cars in the That's airport. Right. They're leaving everything and they're just running away. How they, how are they going to pay the banks all these debts? And this is what happened with me where I said, it's either that I ran away because many of my friends, unfortunately, where they have families, they couldn't bear it and they ran away. Yes. Or to get the money which I have saved. And I remember the money which was saved. It was for my marriage and it was for my sport car. So what do I do? Two very important things for a man. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I got the money and I said, I would have to invest in something. I'm not gonna run. This is the future. United Arab Emirates, in general, it's a land of opportunities. Yes. 
we always witness, witness you know, ups and downs. Yes. And we have seen it for the last, you know, like eight years or 10 or 20 years that even when it goes all the way down, you know, That's the rulers and the leaders of the of the country will always find a way to make it up. Yes. Whether here or in any other uh, countries, because this is why they are called leaders. Yes. To make us feel that, you know, everything is fine. Everything is cool. You just have to have faith, be patient, work so hard. Go for go for alternative options. Don't stick to something. Don't be negative. Of mm. just keep thinking, you know, like oh my God, I have this and I have that. Yes, but there are lots of other things. That's right. You have to adapt of the market. Mm. There is there is something about about myself, and I even you know like uh, I would like to show you one of the uh, like uh, nice painting uh, which I have the black and white horse the black and white horse yeah. and this is for me this is exactly my life I'm Librian Libras normally it's either black or white there is <laughs> I'm a Libran as well all right so what you know day? what I'm talking about what right? date are you fourth uh, of October okay I'm fifteen. All right, yeah. so we are very close. So, you know, we don't have a gray area, right? Yeah. So it's either we do something or we don't Absolutely. do it at all. I'm exactly that. Yes. So when it comes to business for me, it's either that I throw myself to the water. I don't taste the water by putting my hand or I don't do it. I yes. don't touch it. And at that time, th these are the two options. It's either I run or I do something. Yes. And I invest, give it full faith, full focus and do it. So this is what happened. And this is where the, you know, the moment where, you know, like it was again challenging because yeah. I invested into an FMB having a restaurant and I don't know what is the outcome of this. I'm not an expert. Uh, I wanted to save money. And this is one of the things that made me create the platform that we have today where, you know, that this is, you know, like the hero of this restaurant was my father yes. because my father is my friend. He's a real estate guy. And, um, you know, like he was so desperate, I don't know what to do. And he started complaining, uh, you know, like he wants to do something. I said, all right, so what do, you, what do you want? He said, I want to handle you restaurant. I said, but uh, father, you're not, uh, you know, you're not an expert. Anyway, it was agreed that he will do it. So he became the recruiter. He became the designer. He became the chef. With no he experience. With no experience. He's a real estate guy. Okay. We invested and it was amazingly done. Now, what happened? With my experience in FMB, if you don't be there 24 7, yes. that's it. Yes, you that's the reality of FMB that can be overlooked. Yeah. The first two or three months, my father was really committed. And I love him, by the way. It's fine. The, he made me lose uh, uh, almost uh, $200,000. <laughs> But this is the reality after after maybe eight months, we yeah. had to stop bleeding because it did not work mm -hmm. because the three months he was committed. And the moment he starts, you know, like calling uh, my the, the other sons, which is my other brothers. Oh, Abdullah, go see the restaurant. Abdelaziz, go see the restaurant. I knew that, you know, the commitment is gone. Yes. And then we lost almost 60 percent of our investment. Yes. That was a big hit, especially for the people where they believed in you and they say, you know, like Muhammad gonna make it, Muhammad gonna make it, but when so they see it's a good, you. yes, but when they see that it's a failure and then they will look at you and they will say, oh my God, if Muhammad Al Banna, the guy who did this and did that, again, he failed. Mm. So it was a big thing for me yes. in order to support myself, my family and the people around. Yes. And this is where I said, I have again two options. It's either I continue and I do it right this time, or again, I don't do it. Mm. That time we said we will be investing to get something right location, right location, right location. Three things when it comes That's to right. location, 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 of course. Yes. And then to get the right team members where they are committed. Yes. And this is where my best friend came in. And, you know, like me and my best friend, who is my business partner, if we if I invest in this paper, he has to be with me. So this is when we were, uh, you know, kids. Kid until today and uh, you know in the restaurant so he came as a silent partner i would say yes so we have done the same thing again again for a bigger restaurant and i am a silent partner but today this restaurant is one of the successful stories in the middle east fantastic and that was a big saver for me yes again the trust was there for me for the people who surround me that i told them see 
sometimes you really have to give it full focus have faith everything happens for a reason you don't know what is the reason maybe the first reason from the first story the, 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 the restaurant was that yes it's a big failure but it's a great experience to learn yes how to do it right and make it bigger that's right and this is something that i feel i always feel proud and my message to everyone that don't lose hope and just have a target, have a deadline, and give it a full focus. And don't be, you know, distracted here and there where you want to do this, and you want to do that. Just focus on one Stay thing. Stay in your lane, yeah. They always say, you know, if you have, uh, uh, you know, like uh, 10 uh, chickens in this room, and you want to get one, just focus on one. Don't focus on anything to get. Just, you won't catch anything. Yeah, just catch one. Just keep a target on one. Right. When you were looking at that business at the point where it was 60% down, there is a uh, fallacy which is the sunken cost fallacy. Sometimes you're facing a dead end. You're facing a wall and the mistake many make, like when they say invest in share prices, that's 90% down and they still keep on investing it and it's not going to come back up. But in their mind, they're like, hey, I've invested into this. I've invested time, I've invested money. I'm just gonna keep at it. And they just keep going down with it until it's nothing. How did you know this was something that you can work with to turn around instead of just letting it go and cutting your losses? Like what was your, thinking process what did you implement okay so we're talking about the first yes because you you turned around it, it, it was down 60 percent. did you did you let it go and start something else yes absolutely okay so you know like i'm not really sure if this is the philosophy or something that i read uh, before where you know you always have to see you know like how much do you have yes and you can play with 60% of your assets or with your money, the actual money, but 40% you don't touch. So normally when you reach to this limit where you reach to that 40%, then you have to take a call. Okay. It's either that you continue, you take a big risk or you don't. Because that's the only thing you got left. That's it. So if you have $100,000 today, yes. play with 60. No problem. You can invest, invest here, invest there. If you're a risk taker, where you know you 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 do the advantages, disadvantages, and you go on, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. But the other forty percent, you just keep them. Mm. You cannot play with these forty. So this was an indicator for me to know that when I start thinking of touching the forty percent, and I have seen some factors where you know, like this is not working. This is not working. Uh, you know, the, the person who's managing this restaurant is not committed. Uh, the quality is not there anymore. Uh, we start injecting more money because of this and that. Then it's a clear thing. Sometimes it's not a great strategy to continue just for the sake of yes. not being a failure. It's fine. You can fail. You learn. Because yes. for me, it's it, it's not a failure. It's You learn something new. That's right. But don't repeat it. If you want, you go fight, do something better and do it with again with full focus get the great factors all together yes. and you can create something stronger mm. so that was my indicator for me to say that's it i have to i have to stop my bleeding losses. yes and accept the fact that you know like i lost 60 percent and i will i'm fine with the with the remaining 40 percent get inspired one of the questions that i get frequently asked is kev how can I increase my motivation? We see great individuals, we see achievers, like many of the guests that I'm bringing on the show. They have the energy, they do so much, they're in a state of flow. How do they do it? Well, my team and I have released an article which I've made available on kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog, the ultimate biohacking guide to increasing motivation. Or you can simply Google Kevin increase motivation and the article should pop up right at the top. It's absolutely free. Read it, and most important of all, take the bits and pieces that are relevant to you and apply it into your life to increase your motivation. I hope you find the article of value. If you do, feel free to leave your comments and also share it with your circle of friends. Again, you can Google it, Kevin Increase Motivation. It will be the first link that pops up or on my website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog. And what were the lessons that you learned that you implemented to make the next one a success? As to, to bring the right people okay, and to bring not even the right people, the right people, when you say the right people, the people where they have the passion, mm -hmm. the people that you trust, the people that they have this as their own dream, especially if, you know, the trust 
that is there, whether it's someone from, you know, relatives or from the family members in FMB, I'm talking about FMB. Yeah. So this was a great factor for me to bring someone where he has the passion, but also he the was skill. committed. He was committed, and you know, like of course, the passion, the love, it it is, it should always be surrounded with one thing that you have the skills. Of course. Yes. I can't be, you know, like passionate about something that I don't know. I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a doctor, for example. I can't be passionate of being a doctor. Yeah, maybe I love the, the the philosophy of that, but yes. I cannot be passionate. It's not my thing. Sure. So absolutely. So the team was a big factor. The skills to bring someone who, who has the knowledge. You know, like there is something where, you know, like I love about what Steve Jobs says. He said, I like to bring smart people for them to tell me what to do and not the other way around. And this is absolutely, this is something was missing when mm -hmm. I was asking my father about the restaurant, like what to do, how to do this. He did not even know. Yes. But when you bring someone that you trust, someone who has the passion, and he start telling you that this is amazing. And for me as a person in reality, when it comes to, if I, if I want to talk more about the team members, you know, you have a three team members in mm. life. You have a, a, a person where he will come and say, uh, Muhammad, I have, we have a problem. First of all, I hate it when someone say, I have a problem. Yeah, let's call it a challenge. Let's say that they come with this mentality, I have a problem. Then what? So why you're here, right? So exactly. tell me what to do. And this is who, what do you call him? You call him a messenger. Mm. He's just, you know, like delivering you a message. We have a problem. And those people that I like to avoid of when I want to select a team member, you have the second person where he will come and he will say, Hamad, I have a problem and I believe that this is the solution. Mm. Okay. So this person I don't like, I don't hate, he's fine because he is a consultant, mm. which is fine. You have the third person where he will come and say, Muhammad, I have the problem, I have the solution, and this is how I will be implementing, and I just need your blessing. Mm. Who is this person? He is the leader. And I always look for leaders. I always like to empower people. I like people to do mistakes. Yes. As long as they learn. Yes. And as long as they prove me wrong later on that, you know, like, no, no, I have done it, and let's, you know, like, give me the trust back. Mm. So this is, you know, like I like to, you know, to always work with leaders mentality to empower them for them to inspire me as well. Yes. How do you find them? Because that's challenging. Yes, absolutely. Me as a person, one of my passion is to network with people. Yes. It is like, you know, like I believe that this is a gift from God. Maybe not to everyone, but you know, like you like, I can see it, you know, you are passionate of meeting people. So mm -hmm. you have something to deliver. Uh, this is like, you know, like giving back, right? Yes. For me, I like to, net to network with smart people, with everyone, even with young people, because we always learn. Yes. There is something that I posted, right? Something I posted last week where my father used to tell me, people will be traveling from one country to another country. This is maybe a hundred years ago by walking, carrying two camels, going to someone maybe wise man giving them the camel and ask that wise man, please give me an advice. So this is something that I always have it in my, you know, like I always have it clearly where I like to network with people to learn from them, yes, to hear their stories. And I always also say it, your network is your net worth. That's right. Yes. Contacts bring contracts. When you say contacts bring contracts, this is something that might be contracts when it comes to having someone on board. Mm -hmm. So I invest really good time on, on choosing these leaders. I don't, sometimes I don't like the, uh, the traditional way where, you know, like we are hiring, although that, you know, our HR, they are doing it. Sure. But, you know, to bring 50 people, then select 10 and then try. No, for me, I like to spend time with people. I, you know, like I know them as a, in a friendly way. Yes. And then I see their passion. I see the real them. And then I choose that this is, you can be a great leader. And this is where we create something together. And then I appoint him to be the leader for that department. And I give him the full force to implement. Do you ask specific questions? What are you looking for? Let's say, for example, when 
you get the, the right vibe from the person and you want to get to know them a bit more. What kind of questions do you ask to give you an understanding of their character? Normally, I start my questions of what is your objective in life? Okay. What do you want to achieve? Do they have vision? Yes. Yeah. Do you have something to achieve? Are you here to just, you know, get your salaries and, mm. and just be a normal person or you have crazy ideas? Because if you tell me that you are here for salaries, I'm, I'm really sorry. Maybe this is some of the uh, other department's job. But yes. I want believers. I want people that they think, you know, always outside the box. I want people to tell me that this is something. It's not there in the market. And let's do it. And I like, I like these challenges. Yeah. So normally the questions, you can just ask these two things. And, you know, like because it's an open question. Yes. The moment they start answering the question, you will analyze a lot. It gives you an insight into their Absolutely. way of thinking. Absolutely. How yeah. they think. Uh, are they just close-minded? Yeah, I'm do, I'm, I, I want to do this. I want to do that. So normally these are the questions that I see. And even when he says, I want to sell this pen, for example, this is my dream, mm. is to achieve to uh, you know like a level where I am the master of selling that pen. Yes. And then I start going deep. Tell me about your pen. Like, mm. why is the pen? Is it something because it's trending in the market where everyone is selling ten, a pen today and they're making money? Yeah. Or there is love and passion that, you know, you go into details and you can go into technicalities of why is that? So this, again, this question will give you lots of answers mm. where you will see that this person, no, he he's a visionary. He has something to achieve. Yes. And this is where I invest time, effort, energy, I invest whatever I have just to, you know, like to give him the full support in order to make, again, another success story. Another filter on top of what you said, because what you've said is extremely important and powerful, especially in, this, in the Middle East. One of the challenges we face over confidence. How do you separate once you once you get through these individuals through this filter where you're going, hey, this person is really caring about the pen. He or she has passed this level. How do you separate the dreamers, the talkers, from people who are the actual action takers that will get results? Cool. But a lot of people mask it with confidence as well. Yeah. We're overly confident. Absolutely, absolutely. This is where you know, like you have, you have two ways. Mm. Way number one, or option number one, when we want to recruit someone, a leader, it will go from our HR. And it will go to the other senior person, and then another senior person, and then it will reach me. Yes. So those are the people. There are three steps where they will see the reality about, you know, like, are you really, you know, like, have the technicality? Do you know about this plan? Okay, proof. Show me some successful stories that you have done. Yeah. So we are doing it. So yes. we have two things. It's either that someone will come through HR to me all the way, or I prefer that, you know, they come through me for me to see their passion and, and you know, like, yes, they are who they are. Mm. Uh, and then once I'm sure 100% that yes, what they are saying is good, then we, we root them through a process. Mm. And a process we have a three, let's say three departments where they will be assisting them. They will be asking more technical questions and they will be preparing. I like, again, to empower people. So I have HR team for a reason. Yes. Right. So I'm not a decision maker. Yes, I'm a decision maker that you are amazing. You are a great leader. But now HR, they have their it's own. on you. Of course. So they will have to ask a few questions. I have two other people where, you know, they will have to ask more technical questions to to say, yes, whatever is re whatever is reflected on the CV is reflected on you. Mm. Whatever you claim that you have achieved this, yes, we have seen it. And then they will prepare a report with their findings, with the scoring rate. And then they will come and say, Mohammed, okay. And guess what? Sometimes I see that there is a great leader and I believe that he's uh, he is the next leader for that thing. But you know, like the rating which I receive is 50%. Okay. Now, if I'm saying that I'm empowering my team, I cannot say, you know, like, okay, I will take you. Because I will prove, you know, like, as if I'm saying, uh, you know, one, two, three, you are wrong. And mm -hmm. that's what you are here to tell me sometimes what to do. If if we are 50-50, I say yes, and the other person say yes, and the other two say yes, then the decision is mine. Mm -hmm. If three people says no, 
then this is a big indicator for me to say no. You don't overrule because unless if I want if, unless if I want that person, you know, for for something very personal for me to tell him, all right, I am investing with my own money. Please start your company. I'm uh, you know like I'm believing in you. Let's do it. But normally, I like to listen to my people. Mm. That's why they are here. Yes. Very often we forget this very crucial point. You've hired them for a reason. Absolutely. Let them help you achieve that. You Absolutely. hire them to have leverage. If it's going to be you, then it'll just everything will just be on your shoulders. Attracting leaders, finding leaders, that's one aspect. Keeping them is another. And that comes through culture. Reed Hastings, who's the co-founder of Netflix, one of the things he did was as they started growing and they were hiring, he created this thing called the culture deck, which has had like over 10 million views because he made this culture deck of this is the culture of Netflix. He just made it available online. But what he found was by making the, cult the culture deck available where people can just read about the culture of Netflix, it was nothing amazing, nothing professional. You know, you can just log on and have a look at it. What he found, the benefit of that was it filtered a lot of people from coming in because they would read the culture deck before the meeting and they would say, no, this place is not for me. Or they would be super excited about coming in. Mm. But the culture that they had written out was also the reason people have stayed and have built. And today, Netflix is a beast of what has become. Mm. What are some critical things you've implemented to be able to keep your leaders? Very, very nice question. Every person that we onboarded, the first thing I tell them, please don't call me boss. Okay. This is rule number one. I'm not a boss. Even if I am a boss in certain roles, then you are my boss in certain roles. Interesting. You are here today to deliver something that I cannot do it. Otherwise, why I'm bringing you, right? Sure, exactly. So you are my boss. So if you, you know, if we come with a project, you are the boss. You are the decision maker. That's why you're here. Mm. So one number, rule number one, I don't like to be called as a boss. I am your, you, we are all colleagues. We have flat managerial. We don't have, yes, it is. There's a hierarchy. Absolutely. Yes. But I don't like to play that role. So we have a very friendly environment in the office where, you know, like normally, I roll my sleeves, the guys, what do we have today? Uh, I like to be positive. Even if, you know, like things are happening outside, I don't like to see these things. Let's be positive. Let's stick together. So this is absolutely one factor where everyone likes, you know, like the moment they see what, you know, like they interact with the team members. Yes. They just say, I want to be there because you have a great leader. Yes. Yes. I like to be called a great leader. If they believe that I'm a good, uh, I'm, a, I'm a great leader. Yes, I know myself, but I, you know, like I can see it from other people the way that they are recommending. Then this is absolutely something amazing. But mm. I'm not a great boss. I don't want to be a great boss. Mm. So this is, this is point number one, which is the environment to make it very friendly for people to be loyal with you forever. Yes. How to how do you make them loyal? Again, it's very simple. You have two ways, and this is. You know, like the the more you grow, you know, like you have two people on your shoulders, the mm. good guy and the bad That's guy. That's right. Yeah. So the bad guy will start telling you that, oh, my God, deduct salaries or, you know, like give less uh, commissions because of, you know, we start making lots, lots of money. And this is against my rules. Absolutely. Whenever I see things are going up, I like to empower people more. And I like to give them even more percentages, not even I like a commission. Yes. You know, when they achieve one milestone that we will be, you know, like agreeing on, then you are a partner here. Mm. So I make people partners mm. by giving them a certain percentages for them to feel that this is your company. Yes. So today I'm not I'm not making a decision because it is my company or my platform. It is our company. Mm. But you have to earn it. Yes. Absolutely earn it, get it. And this is how they are loyal. And this, there is another thing which is, I don't like to take credit at all. Mm. I have done things in my life which I am satisfied. I know myself. I don't want to keep talking about myself or I don't want to be the one man show mm. where, you know, when, you know, like the reason why I don't have lots of interviews or 
I get uh, many invitations to go and speak here and there, which is something that I will have to share my stories, but it's because I always empower my people. So I have certain people that I am mentoring them. All right, person A, now you go to Monaco, there is something I want you to go and speak there mm. to cover this subject. Uh, person B, I want you to go, there is a TV show and there will be coaching questions. Why? Because I am empowering them. And this is something that I don't want to be the one man show. Mm. And this is something that, uh, that I have seen for the last 18 or 19 years from my experience. And it worked very nicely with me mm. to be your, to, to be their friends. That's it. And when you are their friends and a good mentor or a good leader, not a boss, they will do whatever you want sure. and they will follow you where, wherever you go. Absolutely. How though, especially in this region, from experience, from what I've seen, how do you avoid people abusing this? Because that potentially leaves a room for someone to abuse that gesture. Yes. Take it, it for granted. It is, see, it is very challenging and this is, depends on the people who are running this show. Yes. You always have to set the expectation. Mm. And you have to separate anything emotional with business. Okay. So yes, you are a great leader and you became today someone, you know, very important. You achieve numbers. You, uh, you create a great platform here, but you have to be within the circle. So the moment I see that this person is going outside of the circle okay. because he saw himself now that he is you know, like growing Mentor. bigger and bigger. And he start talking with the team members that I, 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 and not we, we, we. This is where I call the person and I tell, I mentor them. Uh -huh. So again, I, would, I don't have to, you know, take the stick and tell him, listen, this is wrong. No, this is part of my leadership is to go and talk to him. Mm. Do you remember three or four years ago? So why are you behaving? Those people, they were like you four years ago. So I start you know, talking logically with them and just to put them on track. So the first chance, the second chance, did I take such hard decisions to let people go previously within my 19 uh, years of experience? Absolutely, yes. Someone with attitude, for example, where, you know, he will talk with certain uh, colleagues that, you know, like, I did this, I closed that, I did this, I closed that. And mm. these things... It ruins the culture. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is challenging, but thank God within our circle, we don't have it much. Yes. Do we have, you know, like some percentages? Absolutely. Yes. It's I'll a reality. Like, it's, it's, it's a reality. You can never do it at 100%. Exactly. I'd love for our audience to hear your story because I'm sure there's a lot of gems. And because you're the kind of leader who empowers the people around you to be at the forefront and you're not necessarily after the limelight, yeah, I'd like to use this show as the limelight to hear your journey, to hear what you went through, the decisions you've had to face, the challenges you've had to face, maybe mistakes you've made and lessons along the way. Hmm. So take us back to... Oh my God, <laughs> take us back 20 years ago. <laughs> you, look, you look really good for your age, by the way. We're not going to mention it, but you look, you look super great. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're one of five kids. Yes. Okay. We are five. Yes. I am in the middle. Okay. I would say that I am the only risk taker between my th three other brothers and one sister. Uh, it seems to be a thing of the, the middle child is always independent, daring. That's, that's what I see as a, absolutely. As a combination. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, this is, this is something that my father has seen, you know, when I was young. That, you know, like he starts seeing me getting one box, start putting money. What are you collecting money from? Why? And I said, I don't know, I'll buy something. Okay. And I start, you know, like my, my father start discovering, you know, the real Muhammad that, you know, that this guy is, might be a different. businessman. Yes, okay. different. So he started giving me attention. He started believing in me. How old were you when you were saving? Uh, maybe 15. Okay. 15, 16, where I got my box and I remember. And at that time, this was the, you know, the beginning of my story. Where I remember I was in my father's room on the floor and I was looking, looking at my father and he was sitting like this to watching the TV. And then I told him, uh, you know, like that, what's, 
What's wrong? Why you are why are upset? He said, nothing. So why you are upset? Talk to me. <laughs> nothing. And then, you know, I felt it. I felt so bad. At that time, again, real estate, where, you know, like in real estate, you know, it's a cycle. Bad, yeah. ups and downs. And something I, I always thank my father for me to experience that life where, you know, like we lived when it was in the peak, yes. traveling all around the world and living under the ground where we don't have anything. Yes. So I have seen those two lives. So at that time in that room, I felt that, you know, like my father is upset or sad. Uh, something was going on. Something was going on and something, re- you know, related to financial. And I told him, dad, can I offer you to open the box, which I said for the last one year? And then surprisingly at that time, he didn't say yes, he didn't say no. And I felt so great. I went running, I came, I opened the box because, you know, like I was so excited for two things, to know how much is there (laughs) (laughs) for one year. And the second point is to support my father. He accepted to take from me and I was with that feeling. Yeah. And I remember that that day there was lots of coins. 50 fells, one dirham, and oh my God, you find five and 10 dirhams like here oh, on the man. notes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm not really sure how much was that, but you know, it was a decent amount for me to give my father. And he took them. And I felt so proud from that moment. I said, I will have to find ways in order to support my family. Whether my father in the peak yes. or here, I would have to find myself. It was that feeling, right? Absolutely. So that's it. So yeah. this is where I start seeing myself. You are a businessman. You can do this, and you can that. You can do that. So, and so you're still at school because you're 16, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in school. So when I joined the university, which my father was also supporting, of course, then I start seeing and applying for jobs. And there was a program for one of the banks for credit cards. Okay. I was so young. Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe at that time I was like 20 years old. And uh, yeah, 20 or 19. Did you know what you wanted to do? No, but I started discovering myself that, you know, like, I'm, I like to network with people. Uh-huh. This is what because, you became aware of it. Because when I was young, I used to go, you know, like, go out. And normally I like, you know, to, I'm, uh, I'm a fun person. I like to enjoy life. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a happy person. I always say thank you, God. Yes. And, uh, you know, like wherever I go, whenever I see any people, you know, like I interact with them, I talk to them, you know, like normally, like, you know, I don't need anything from you. You don't need anything from me. Let's talk. Right. So I said, let me try and let me see, you know, like if if they will take me for that program. And I applied. I met, you know, like the decision maker, luckily. And for some reason, he started asking me questions. And I remember the first question he told me, send me the pen. That was the first. Okay. I don't know from where I started telling him like, all right. And I didn't, you know, at that time there was no YouTube. You don't search about what is sales. Yes. So I told him, oh my God. So this pen, if you buy it, I'll give you 10. He said, how? I tell him this is a promotion. You buy one, you get nine. (laughs) And I swear to God, (laughs) it was, you know, like all, you know, coming coming out, just coming out. And then I said, but you know, like, and even if you pay today, you will get this uh, discount. The guy was amazed. And that's why he said, you know, like, you are recruited. Congratulations. Don't wait for any offer letters. Or And I, I called my father at that time. So my father was my mentor. Yes. And I told him, this what they told me this. I was so excited. So excited. So my first job was selling credit cards. Yes. It was the toughest job. Ever. I, I've done that as well. Not as a first job, but yeah. Credit card. So I sold credit card. I sold American Express credit card. Oh my God. So you know, you know the, the, you know, like. I want to know how, more about it. Okay. How hard is that? So, so that was my first job, my actual. I have like a trainee in different things, but my first job, my first experience working in a bank, which is selling credit cards. And at that time, again, you have two options of selling credit cards. And now maybe you will relate. It's either that you go to a company which is listed with the bank, where you go and tell them uh, it's a free credit card you want to apply. So this attitude yes. or behavior. Or you go, you know, like open the door. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Al-Banna. I have a free things for you today. 
and I will be passing you just one second. And I start doing this. And seriously, it worked very nicely, you know, because I tried it, you know, to go and say, ask someone, are you interested? Like, okay, they will so you, feel... So you tried it? Yeah, I've tried it the first, you know, like to go and uh, like, I have a free credit card and, you know, like, uh, are you interested? No, I'm not interested. You. Yeah. So I changed the strategy immediately where I, you know, like I forced myself, guys, I have free credit cards and I will be passing by you. Sir, you have this and this is one, two, three, four, and it's free for life. All what I need is the passport copy and the service certificate. And by the way, I just spoke with the receptionist. She said she can help you to get the service certificate. Are you interested? <laughs> Straight hustle. So, oh, man. And it worked very nicely. So this is one. And what was interesting is you don't you didn't keep repeating the same process that didn't work. You quickly okay. adjusted. And not adjusted also, you have to develop and yes. you have to upgrade yourself yes. to create a new roles. Yes. So what did I do at that time? At that time, I knew in three branches, three people were working as the main receptionist for the branch manager, especially for the golden section. And those are the people who get all the phone calls for that branch. Yes. I used to talk to those people smartly. So I learned at that time, that sentence, work smart and don't work hard. So I start engaging with those people and I start asking them, you know, like normally when, whenever you have, you know, after, you know, building great relationship with them. Yes. You have to build relationship with them. Don't ask right at the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you go and tell them, listen, can you please support me? I need all the cards that you are receiving, all the phone calls. No one will. So, you know, I start building great relationship. This yeah. is the long term where, you know, like when the relationship was built, by asking them lots of questions. What do you do? How do you get this? Make them feel that they are also important because they are important yes. for me at that time. And so, you know, like I start engaging with them and they, they told me, all right, you know, I built also a good relationship with the branch manager. So I get the approval from him somehow that, okay, whenever you get anything related to cards, give it to Muhammad, not to the call center. Mm. That was a killing point. That was, you know, work smart and not hard. Yes. So I started receiving the phone call for me to do the discovery call. Yes. For me to go and, and it was sign an application. Edge. Yeah. And I was one of the top performance at that time. I was young, but, you know, like top performance, like every month, every month, every month. So and this is where I start utilizing my skills by saying, oh, my God, it's a great network. And I start seeing you know like the people who were targeting that department which is the golden branch yes. uh you know they were the vip clients who reached that branch and i start seeing okay how what can i do different with this person can i cross sell him something else so i start engaging of the mortgages start cross selling the other products yes this is where i have been selected to be promoted and start selling the mortgages. Because you started doing it before you were promoted. Exactly. Okay. So I start seeing if I can sell him a credit card and have a good relationship with this VIP, why don't I offer him something else? Why not? And I start supporting the other team member who was my colleague in the other department. But it got so, noticed. So I start giving him mortgage deals and he gave me back the credit card. Again, these are, you know, like, different ways, different yes. methods where, you know, you you increase your chances to get a card from here, card from here, card from here. This is where you are one of the top achievers. And this is where people, they notice that you are doing something smart. And this is where, you know, like someone, I remember, uh, uh, you know, like a very, very nice mentor, I would say, where he looked at me and he called me. He said, I want to talk to you. And this is at the bank? Yeah, yeah, at yeah. the bank. And he told me, tell me about yourself. I've seen you going here and there. You are like a bee. Uh, tell me, what, what do you do? And then I started telling him. He didn't know that I'm in, from that department. Because at that time, you know, you have a credit card department. Yes. And this is direct sales. You have a direct sales for auto loan. You have direct sales for mortgages, for personal loans. So there are lots of people. But he noticed you. He noticed me. And this was, again, another start where, you know, he said, Mohammed, why don't you come and join us? And at that time, mortgage was the, you know, like the, you know, like you have a credit card. Yes. Like the beginning of entering the bank. You have auto loan, personal loan. Mortgage was the top because yes. you always deal with 
VIP clients who wants to buy a property Bigger for one numbers. million or two million. And that was my start. So I joined Rackbank for almost uh, four years mm. uh, or maybe five years. There is a very sensitive story which I'll be sharing with you. Very sensitive. And this is one of the real story. Something happened, although that I was one of the top achiever, top performance. My name was flying everywhere. One day I received a phone call from someone. And he told me that you are going to meet X. I said, yes. He said, okay, I am Y. I didn't know him at that time because, mm-hmm. you know, when you work for a bank, you have plenty of people, right? Yes. So I don't know. And I didn't recognize that he was a GM at that time. And I said, sorry, but I didn't, you know, like, I don't know you. He said, okay, now you are meeting X, Y, Z. He's one of the VIP. I said, yes, I have the file and everything is fine. I'm going in right now. He said, okay, fine. By the way, I am the GM. I said, okay, sorry, I didn't know you because then also I'm, you know, like I'm entering, I have a big sale. It was a big deal. He said, okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. I went, closed the deal, got the documents, came back very happy, went to the boss. Boss, we signed the deal. It was a big deal, like, you know, like a three, four million kind of uh, for deals at that time. Great commission for the bank, for us, for everyone. And that's it. The second day I received a phone call from HR. And the guy called me and they were two people. My boss, the higher one, and you know, the HR. And they were really upset. And I was, you know, like young, still young. I was sitting, you know, like uh, front of them and they said, Hamad, we just want to tell you one thing. Although that you are one of the top achievers and we all like you, you know this, from here and from there, but we are really sorry to tell you that today is your last day. What? Left field. Yeah. Last day. Last day. I said, why? What did I do? I just closed the deal. They said, because you did not recognize, we got a, we got an instruction from GM to fire you. Oh, my God. That was the first hit in my life. Because you didn't recognize Because the I didn't recognize the name. Okay. And I didn't recognize the name because at that time, as I said, like, you know, like I was going into something like sales and he was talking, you know, like, you know, like, uh, you know, Scottish, you know, like some, sometimes you don't really understand at that time, you know, like I if didn't get it. He was Scottish. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't get it, you know, like, hey, this is why I'm your lover. So, and I'm, you know, like I'm going to close a deal. I was literally going to enter the door to the reception to meet that person because I didn't know the name. And this is, you know, like my result. I swear to God, I left. And how, how were you feeling in that moment? I'll tell you. Yeah. I left from the office. I parked my car and I started crying. I swear to God, I started crying like a baby. Yeah. Like, what did I do? I have built a great name for me. Great commission. Everything was working so nicely. Why? And then I felt that this is not fair. Mm. But this is life. So what do I do? I went home. And I told my father, who is my mentor, of course, you know, the mother will always feel, you know, like so emotional. So, you know, like my father starts saying no problem. So they start to calm me down. And I stayed for maybe two days trying to do like, you know, to know what's what's happening now and what is next. I knew at that time that I'm lack finance, which is a company. I call it my school. So. You know, I knew that there is an opening for sales. I mean, I'm a sales, so I have to go and sell myself. At that time, I checked who is working there. So I started asking questions. And they said, one person who was studying with me in the university, she's there. I told her, her name is Heba. Heba, I want you to call the branch manager who has this. I don't know who's there. Who's got the opening. Give them the CV and tell them that I want to come and meet you. And she did that. You didn't just send an email like most people to get lost. In Nothing at emails. all. I did my homework. Yeah. Who is there? I knew that this company was booming. Yes. I at that time, times. Amlak and Tamwil, you know, that all those, you know, big giant uh, companies that yes. they are doing the mortgages. And I said, uh, now this is my target. Again, 
you know, focusing instead of focusing on 10 chickens, I said, I want to only This is one. my chicken. This is my chicken. This is my bread. This is everything. I just want to go there. And then she called Anvita, a name which I will never, ever forget. And I will always remember. And she told her, listen, there is a crazy guy who is, you know, like who was born for sales, as he says, and he wants to meet you. She said, okay, let him, let him come. I met her after four days of me being fired. I went there and I told her, listen, I can do one, two, three, four. There were two people. And she started asking me lots of questions. And by the end, she looked at me and she was laughing. She said, I don't know where did you come from? <laughs> and I said, trust me, you take me now and you will see the numbers. And I was very honest. And I told her that I, I you know, like I am, I am injured, you know, I have great feelings because, you know, whenever you have some disaster, yes, you have this emotional, this emotional, you, it's two things. It's either that they destroy you yes, and they will make you go to one room and start crying and start making, you know, like thinking of, I want to do this bad thing because yes. I want to forget and, yeah, and negative and, habits or you, or you use this as a weapon. Yes. Be aggressive and say, you know what? You will see. And you actually this is said, the feeling. And you actually said this? And to I the told person? her, I told her, listen, just so that you know, I got fired because of one, two, three. But I am a great sales and I know myself. Hire me and I promise you will not regret it. So she liked the fact where I told her that I was fired. Yes. I didn't tell her that, you know, I'm resigning and no, no, I am. You were authentic. I am True. very honest and I know what I want. And she said, you, she, she said, you know what? I don't know where, where you came from, but uh, I like you. And I can feel the energy. Because mm. I can feel it right now. Within, I feel like I'm sitting there. Up, 10 days later, I received the offer letter from Amlak. I was extremely happy. So if I was getting, for example, for example, $1,000, within 10 days, I got an offer for $3,000. Now suddenly... That terrible thing was actually a great a blessing in disguise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then at that time, I started believing in something called everything happens for a good reason. Mm. I didn't know, you know, even if you know, sometimes you will hear lots of things in your life, yes, right? But it doesn't you, Maybe you will feel, I just said it now, your, you know, contacts bring contracts. Yes. But maybe people will hear it and they will say, I don't know what, what does it mean? But if they did it themselves, and they create a great network and from create network they create a synergy between people and they create opportunities and they make it to, into successful story yes then they would know what i'm talking about yes get inspired imagine if you could present yourself your thoughts and your ideas with clarity and confidence imagine if you could speak to influence and impact imagine if you could communicate like a commanding and charismatic leader. Well, you can, given the right information and the investment of effort from your end. How do I know that? As a public speaking coach, I work with CEOs, world leaders, and presidents. And when they hire me, they expect nothing short of results. And over the years, it's been two decades now, two challenges have risen for me being unable to help the majority of people. I'm usually on a plane, with the majority of my time being booked a good year or two in advance. And my one-on-one -on -one session to work with someone in person generally starts at $20,000. So we solved the problem by making my public speaking course available for you online. Everything that I teach my clients when I'm working one-on-one, -on -one, thoughts, tips, strategies, how to do things, all on video, all sequenced in the right order for you to be able to watch, re-watch, practice and refine your presentation, your speaking and your overall communication skills. And guess what? You will get results. Now you can have this course not for the $20,000 that my clients pay me when we work one-on-one. -on -one. You can have it for $9.97. That's right, just $9.97. You might be thinking, well, why are you offering something that you charge $20,000 for, for $9.97? It's simple, because those who want to work with me one-on-one -on -one will still hire me. 
but for many whom I might be out of their budget, this is a great way to develop their communication skills, to cut through the noise, to rise above the rest, and to beat their competition. If you're serious about wanting to develop your skills, to be able to present your thoughts, your ideas, and yourself with clarity and confidence, to be able to speak, to influence and impact, and to communicate like a confident and charismatic leader, then this course is for you. Go on to kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash course and get started today. So this is what happened. Everything happens for a reason. It was a great reason for me. I doubled or tripled my salary. I joined the, the, uh, the, the company and guess what? Within almost a year and a half, I was the youngest team leader at that time, managing 15 people. Good man. And Good man. you know, like it became a story for me. It became a story. Failure, utilize the, all these emotional go because you are really upset, but you want to prove people wrong and you want to feel them that this is the worst decision. Yes. Because you lost millions because I was bringing millions. Yes. And so and you then channel I, your energy. Absolutely. And I start, you know, like the leadership of knowing, you know, like utilizing my skills and this started from Anvita. She used to be my senior vice president, where she started telling me, now your next role is to be a leader mm -hmm. because I can see it. Numbers, you are achieving. You are crazy. You are hyper. You have all this energy. I want you to utilize all these skills and start, you know, like teaching other people. Tell them what is your secret because also it's a win-win for, for me and for her. Yes. It's a win-win because I will create more many of Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. Yes. And also it's, it's great for me because I am, you know, developing my career and I am a team leader. And this is what happened at that time, 15 people. This is starting from 2006 until 2008. Again, in 2008, something that I don't know if I should uh, also share or not. But again, I receive a phone call because I built great relationship inside, internally, with people, a very friendly, like a family. So I supported many people and they supported me. I want, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. Because I can sense and I can see and I can feel it. Because you can, the feeling you cannot deny. Yeah. I can feel that you have that in terms of developing great relationships. And I'd like you to continue the story. But I'd love to know when you're saying developing great relationships, what does it involve? Does it mean getting someone a coffee? Does it mean check, uh, saying hello in the morning? What does it involve? Because people say build relationships and many don't have the skill to do it. So what was it about you? Two things. Yeah. All of me smiling. Makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Huge difference. And be positive. You know, like for me, I, I was the only maybe crazy guy where I come every day Hey, good morning, sabah al khair, blah, blah, blah. So that's it. Interesting. There is no, you know, like, all right, good morning with, you know, this positive energy and that's it. Yes. And I swear to God, my table was very well known where people will come and stand. The they will put their table. hands. This is very well known. It's like one by one. They will put their hands and they will start sharing, you know, stories or gossips. Did you know what happened here? Did you know what happened there? And I, I'm a good listener. I listen and I don't care. This is, <laughs> and this is, you know, the, I listen and I don't care. This That's is, awesome. No, not not care. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I listen, but I don't share. Oh, I don't share. Okay, so you just right. keep it in. So I, yeah, yeah, so I listen and I don't share because these yes. are like little secrets, right? Yes. So I was always there for them. So they would come for a consultation, and sometimes, by the way, consultation something related to family things right yes so with their family with their business with their, their boss they were comfortable just sharing just to share all right whatever was in their and mind and for me i was always real and i was i was always there for them as long as they don't need something from me yes and vice versa then the relationship is there and because i i like to enjoy life yes so i always like to create things you know like let's go out you know for uh, you know like there is autodrome for cars let's go play basket let's do this so I was, you know, like people they, they, at that time, they, they, you know, they, they used to tell me that you have to put the spotlight on you. I said, I don't like, which is, it's, uh, of course, it's amazing. Who doesn't like? But I don't like to be a normal person. Mm. I like to create something. I like to create this energy. 
So, you know, we used to go out, we used to go play basketballs, uh, footballs, do these kind of, uh, uh, you know, challenging games. I, you know, because this is, uh, this is part of my life. I like to enjoy life, you know, life is too short. And, you know, like the people were there, they were amazing. And it's like a potential for us to, again, enjoy life and do business. Yes. And that's why that business was one of the, not very few, I was really lucky of having jobs in my life where, you know, like, I feel like tomorrow I want to go there because they have a great deal to, you know, to, to close. You were looking forward to the place. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is something, you know, like, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry to share this with different, you know, with different people that they have, you know, different roles that, you know, like, I don't want to call any, I, I, I don't want to name any departments, but sometimes it is they have a routine job. Yes. For certain people that they come from eight till five, they do exactly the same job. And those are the people where they need, they always feel that I need a break. Mm. But people who are doing the, you know, the, and I always say sales is an art. So the people who were born for sales, they enjoy, they learn, they network, they create synergies and they close deals and they make money. Mm. So this is one, again, this is was my passion. And this is why I was always, you know, like happy and I don't care. Ten, I stayed in Amlak almost 10 years and a half. It was my school. So the, to go back to your question, like what did it take? It took, it just, you know, like a nice smile and with the positive energy and that's it. Get inspired. You know this by now that we are the number one YouTube show slash podcast that's coming out of the Middle East from Dubai. If you like the idea of having your brand reach at least a million eyeballs per episode, then feel free to reach out to my office on kevinabdurrahman.org. Without further delay, let's continue this great conversation. And to go back to my story. Yes. So this is because I created a great relationship with, with, with people. I received a phone call from someone and she told me, Mohammed, you will receive a phone call from HR in 2008 when they start firing people, unfortunately. And this is something like it was well known. It affected forever. everywhere. Yes. So they start firing. And I remember that was again, one of the hardest moments in my life. So the moment you receive a phone call from a person called X, just to see his name in your, mo in your phone, it's not good. You're fired. <laughs> And I was a team leader at that time. Yes. Okay. So I got 50 people and I received the call. I said, oh my God, I got the call, which is I'm fired. And then I received, uh, yes. He said, hi, Muhammad, how are you? Alhamdulillah. So is it my turn? He said, no. Can you please ask uh, one of my, one of my guys, can you please ask him to, uh, to come? I knew that he was the victim, <laughs> not me. <laughs> So at that time, I didn't want to do yes or, you know, like, you know, yes for me, but not yes for my team member yes. because he's my, uh, he's my colleague. So, you know, I received a phone call and, you know, like at that time, they selected a few people, luckily, and I was one of them by saying, you know, like you receive a phone call and you might be selected for this department uh, or else if you say no, then maybe you're out. And because of the good relationship, I got the phone call. And I accepted and I continued the job mm. for another five or six years. So again, this is, you know, like the, the, the power of relationships. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes, yes, build relationship, you know, internally and externally. Yeah. And clearly it, what's evident to me is you were not doing it for something in return. Absolutely. You're, you're playing the long game subconsciously and, maybe yes and and honestly building network i don't see it's a it's a game again it's an art like you know like uh, it's a way of life it's uh, exactly it's, yeah. it's something that you know like i normally like to again network with people seriously to learn from them i like to hear stories like yes. what is your story share with me because i want to learn from you you know there is uh, you, today in the market you have many people that they call themselves experts yes Lots of, you know, like, uh, especially in some of the uh, applications today, one, the, the platforms that, you know, like social medias, I don't want to mention uh, the, 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 the name of the application. Every time you see someone, he's an expert. He's an expert. He is, he is. But when you ask him, like, how did you get this title? I mean, did you go through this and this and this for did you, you to be an expert? Yeah. Did you experience every single thing? Yes. If yes, then, then you are an expert. 
And you you cannot be an expert because you got a lot with with all my respect. You did a weekend love, course, so you know to go and get a course. Then you call yourself an expert. So these are challenges, and yes. you see many people where you need you really have to you know to, to discover the re- to discover the real people. What you say is interesting because when I started my career as a motivational speaker, that was it, and then the public speaking coach with CEOs and world leaders wasn't something I planned. Hmm. It just started coming in from phone calls I was receiving. I remember the first phone call was from a, um, a Royal Highness's office. His right-hand person called and she goes, hey, is this Kevin Abdurrahman? I'm like, yes. And I'm calling from so-and-so's office. And I'm like, am I in trouble? <laughs> and she laughed, but I wasn't. And, and, I'm, and then we talked and she goes, hey, he has seen you speak. He would like you to come and work with him because he, he is speaking and he would like to develop his communication skills. And then after getting a few phone calls and having a few of these kind of clients, which was not planned, I started asking them, you have a communication team. There are all these courses and there are a lot of these media agencies that are available. They can provide you an ex-journalist who can come and do a one-day training with you. Why are you hiring me? Because I'm not cheap. And they said, what you just mentioned, because you've gone through it you speak for a living. I can get all the books. I have a communication team. I can get an ex-journalist, but you're someone who's speaking today to an audience. You charge a fee to speak. Your role is to communicate a message. I want to learn from someone like you so that I can do the same in my capacity. Absolutely. And that's how the whole business developed was because of real life expertise rather than a weekend course and to call yourself an expert. Absolutely. You are very good at both sales and communication. I actually have so many questions I want to ask. I'll ask all the questions so I don't forget and then we'll come in sure. and tackle it one at a time. First one is, how did you develop your sales skills? Like what are maybe perhaps some lessons or tips you've learned to become better at sales that could be useful for anyone that is in sales? And perhaps with your wisdom today, they can implement from that and become better at selling. The second question is, how did you develop your communication skills? And thirdly is the element of luck. Perhaps I'll start with luck and then we'll go back to the first two questions. A wise man once told me, and this is two decades ago, and the lesson has stayed with me until today. And he said, Kev, luck, if you break it down into the letters, is L-U-C-K. Laboring under correct knowledge. And he goes, if you want to be lucky, understand what, what luck really is. And then you can go out there, work hard, and you create your own luck. From the outside world, it could very much seem, especially with your position today and what you're doing, that this journey was just all easy and lucky. Hmm. Is that the case? Absolutely not. I don't believe in luck. I know that there is, you know, we, we go through certain things in life where we hear it. You know, you are lucky, you are lucky. Yes, you are lucky, but you create the luck, right? Mm. You can't uh, have something today in this office, for example, you know, like coming from someone, uh, you know, I call myself, oh my God, I'm lucky because I received this. No, I created something to get it. Of course, luck and faith, you know, like uh, this is something, you know, like, okay, this is like a gift from God. Yes. This is luck. But also, you know, the hard work. Yes. So, you know, like for me, three things, it has to be all linked together. So, you know, like number one, Work on it, have faith, and you can, you know, like, it depends on everyone else. But this is for me, I ask God, you know, like, hopefully to make it easy and, and, and. And also, you know, to be lucky to be, you know, like, to be chosen or for some great opportunities, you might find three people where they have the three things again. Yes. But, you know, like, you were lucky that that person noticed you. Yes. Something like I was lucky to go back when I went, when I have been upgraded from you know, selling credit cards or mortgages. I was lucky that that person recognized me here and there, but because of my hard work. Yes, yes. It so really I comes created down to that it. luck. Correct. Right? Yes, luck. I was lucky that he was there at that moment where I was roaming and he said, come, we got the opportunity. And I, you know, like I had like maybe the five minutes to sell him the future that I can do this. Yes, and I am committed. But the chances are he was looking and if you were just sitting on your desk maybe just he being average, talking. Uh, maybe even maybe he, he wasn't, wasn't looking. looking because, you know, he has his own team. Yes. But he felt like, you know, like selfish in a good way. Oh, my God. Who's that busy bee? Exactly. So let me, instead of credit card, let me take him and put him to the mortgages. Yes. 
you know, like it it was like gradually to go credit card or to own personal own mortgage. Yes. So I was lucky at that time to move there mm. because that guy recognized me. So this is something, yes, I believe in luck, but I believe in creating the luck. Yes. And that's why today where I'm sitting here is, is you know, like, the, yeah, we created the luck, I would say. Yes. But nothing called luck or something that, you know, people will give you that trust because they empty. like you. Yes. No, you have to go through lots of things where people, they, they know that if you have this challenging moment, it's fine. No problem. Mm. It's not the end, of, end of the world. You can, you know, come up with something. You can always come with solution, solution. Let me share with you something also, again, from, from experience, maybe not related to this. Six months ago, when I recruited someone here in the office and she came one day, and she said, oh my God, we have a problem. I said, what's the problem? One, two, three, four. I told her, okay, forget one, two, three, four. Listen, never, I, ca- I gathered all of them. Never ever come and say, we have a problem. Don't be a messenger. Or we have something. And don't be, it's not about messenger. Come, deliver the message in a very nice way, and there is a solution. Mm. But don't come, you know, like, uh, yes. there is there is solution for everything in this life. Absolutely. In, in Islam, in our religion, it is mentioned there that for each disease, there is, uh, there is a medicine. Yes, there is a cure. There is a cure, right? So there is, absolutely. But are you going to find this medicine quickly? Yes or no? This is something else. Sure. So let me tell you this amazing story where, you know, like two weeks ago, the same person opened the door, tap, tap, tap. Mr. Muhammad, can I enter? I said, yes, yes, please come. Because I have the open door, by the way, uh, policy. Yes. But if the door is closed, then it means that I have meeting or I have something. So she opened the door and she said, I know it's urgent, but uh, I just want to talk to you. Can I? I said, yes. She said, uh, Kazi, which is the uh, our colleague, uh, the, the office boy, uh, Kazi throw, you know, like a small charcoal in the trash and there, there is a fire. <laughs> I swear to God. I said, and. So, so calm. Yeah. And I said, and, <coughs> like, did Kazi, anything happen with Kazi or with the with the furniture or the or the property? She said, no, but there is, you know, like, there is a fire. And the security so is outside. Anyway, I said, okay, fine. So the property is fine. Kazi is fine. All is good. Yeah. All right. Then let's go. I swear she was so calm and it's so funny. I went and I will show you now the, uh, the the room and I found it all black. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What is this?" And I, you know, like the person was inside, okay. And I was looking. I told him, "Kazi, are you okay?" He said, "Sorry, I'm really sorry. This is my second mistake." I said, "I'm asking you, are you okay?" He said, "Yes, sir, I am okay." And then you know, like I start seeing the property. I I even saw the trash, like you know, because it was burned. It became like a stylish, <laughs> seriously. And then I told him, oh my God, you made just like an art fire. now. I, I love it, keep it. And I went, I was so cool. And you know, like they wiped it, they cleaned it, everything. Yeah. And the uh, the people from the, the building support us big time. Not a big deal. Again, it's an experience for us. Yes. Again, something happened for a reason. I don't know what is that reason we will discover. Yes. But this is, you know, like, so, you know, like uh, something what happened where, you know, like it made me really, really smile. And now I don't know uh, why I brought this story. And it's interesting art. how it um, she's learned to just be calm about it. Yeah. The yeah energy abs- she brought. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was it was an amazing uh, moment. I really would like to ask because you mentioned networking. And yes. Very, very yes. Um, <clears throat> but you see in today's world, there's a lot of people who have that ability, who have the talent. But they've had a mediocre life and they're scared to go network because people ask, what do you do? And they, they don't know how to present themselves. They don't know how to sell themselves. They could be genuine. And, and they could be them, good. But they've just had a mediocre life and they feel they're not up, up on par with other people. Yes. Something. But you can... No, no. You, can, well, you should let's leave that as that. That's a good question. Today, Muhammad Al-Bana can just go and he's got a track record. People know him. There is an easy confidence that exudes. But that's a really good question because there will be people who, are, who have the capacity or who've made a decision, perhaps watching this video, they've made a decision to go, hey, 
I can live at a much better life or I'm going to go for it. But now when I go networking, I don't have that track record or I can't keep up with others. Yeah. What would be your thought or your advice? This is something natural. Yes. Unfortunately, it's not for everyone. Out of 100, you have the 70% skills for sales and you have 30% the skills for admin work, mm -hmm. let's say. Would you utilize your time, effort, energy to increase your 30% and make it 100? Because you will you will go to a mentor and he will tell you, you will take courses. You become the best admin And possible. you will do whatever because you say, I am excellent. I have 70% already for sales. Let me, you know, develop myself into 30%. Mm. Would you develop this 30% or would you focus on the 70% and make it 100? On the 70. Exactly. Because yeah, you focus on your strengths. Absolutely. So you have the person, he has to, you know, like first see what is his passion and his love and what is his skills. Mm -hmm. Like certain people that you feel that, again, they were born to network, but maybe they don't have the skills. This yes. is something. Yes. And we'll talk about it. But people that normally they don't like, they, you know, like, for example, one of my brothers, this is not, he's not yes. into these things. Yes. And when I invite him, come, you know, like I am invited here and there. No, no, no. I don't like to socialize. I think me and your brother will be great friends. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm, an intro, I'm an introvert. I, I don't like networking. Really? Yes, but tell your story and I'll share with you my story. Wow. Yes. So again, so this is something, there is nothing called you are wrong and I'm right. Yeah. You are right and I'm right. Yes. But you know, like, I like to do this. You don't like to do this. Yes. And vice versa, you yes. like to do something else where I don't like to do something else. As long as I respect your decision and you respect my decision, we are fair. Yes. So now let's talk about how to develop your network. If you are into 70%, it will require effort. Yes. Again, you cannot just go and network or become, uh, you know, like some influencers out of nothing. One year ago, I had a vision and, you know, like I would like to even uh, thank uh, this great platform, which is LinkedIn, to be honest. I'm not active. I'm old school. I don't have all these social media, but I'm very, very active in LinkedIn or became very active. Uh, through a person also called Dwael, that this guy who I was sitting with him for a coffee and he changed my mind that this is the future. And I knew it, you know, I wanted to be low profile, mm. okay? Where, you know, like I said, no, I, um, you know, I'm doing one, two, three, um, you know, like enough, everything is fine. I don't want more loads on me. But then I start realizing that, you know what? No, you have, it is a must that you have to share with people. Yes. And in order to increase my network and to, you know, like to reach different people, different countries. Yes. Then I change my strategy and I said, you know what? Normally when someone comes and he asks me, Muhammad, what do you do? I open a PowerPoint. I show him something. All right. With a slide of these are the successful stories. Then I had a vision. So first you have to have a vision mm -hmm. and you have to have a goal. One. Why do you want to achieve these people? Do you want to make money out of them? Do you want to only network with them for long term? So you have to have a target. Yes, you got to be clear. My target was to reach different countries, to network with people. I don't want to do business with you. Yes, this is the ultimate later on. Sure. But I want to learn, you know, like how to fill the gap between here and that country. Mm. How can we create something? How can I benefit you if you, if you know, like if you come here sure. and vice versa? Sure. So not related to business. Yes. And that's why when I got a great invitation from a friend of mine who is a brother now called Eduardo from Italy, mm -hmm. you know, like it happened exactly the same. So he came for business. I did not network for business. And I don't even show sometimes that I am only interested in business. Yes. But I wasn't interested in him and his family. And that's why we, we created a great relationship where, you know, like we start traveling there and he start showing me the countries. So sometimes networking, is not only business, it's to create something for the future. Absolutely. So let me again go back. So I had a vision. All right. This is, I will be using it to network with people, to show them, to avoid the question, to, to avoid having a question, Hamad, what do you do? And, you know, like show me a PowerPoint. No, no, no. I want everything is digital now. 
and let's thank God. And then the technology yes. that, you know, like everything as you, it's very simple. Work hard, advertise what you do. Yeah. Yep. Right. So when I start doing this, I start receiving lots of inquiries, inquiries. And I start, you know, networking with people that they want to network. They want to come and learn something. They mm. want to know the real passion. Mm. Or I start reaching people where they have that, you know, like, you know, they have done something in their life. And that's why they reach into that level. Mm. And I know because I've gone through it, like all C-level or founders or, 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 they did not reach there by luck. Yes. So I start reaching them, not to tell them that let's do business. I would like to hear your story. So these things will require really time, effort, energy. Yes. To put into this in order to build your platform. So yes. today, I, if we believe, for example, uh, if I believe that we maybe we were linked uh, through LinkedIn, for example, it's because maybe you have seen some of the posts that I have done mm. and I got your attention. Mm. And now today, if we are sitting here today sharing my story, so at least this was one of my objectives in life. Yes. It's just to network with people because I don't know what will happen with this person or with that person. As long as I'm not talking about money, I'm just being very honest of gr building great relationship with this person. Yes, this is genuine. The then the result will come after that. Yes. So to utilize again the message for those people, they have to be patient, they have to have confident, and they have to have a reason of why you want to network. Mm. And be straightforward. I mean, if I am linking with you today, it's either that I tell you, uh, hello, Kev, I, you know, like, um, I, I hope all is good with you. Mm. Uh, I have something to propose to you. I have seen what you are doing and I have something to do. Mm -hmm. Is this right or wrong? I don't know, but this is clear. For you as direct approach. This is a clear for you as the reader to say, I am interested or not. Sure. So this is, you know, because for me, sometimes I don't like to receive messages. Hi, how are you? X, Y, Z, and then this and then that. And the, the attention is hidden. And there, and, and this is something that I start using also. I'm going to lots of stories, by the way, sure. because I'm sharing lots of things. But this is something that I was coaching uh, some of my team members. I, you know, like we were in the car. I told him, you know what? And I was experiencing this with two people. I realized if I am telling the person in advance that, listen, we are going to, for example, Emirates Towers. We are leaving from Abu Dhabi to Emirates Towers. The moment I empower the guy and tell him that, listen, we are going there and you drive, then he will do it his way. What is he going to do? It's either that he will tell me, I know the way, mm -hmm. or he will say, I will open the Google map and he will drive. Sure. Which is a clear for him, clear for me. Yes. Because I want to clear what is my destination. Mm. And I made it clear to him, but I tried the other, and these are things that I have tried in my life. So I, for example, I leave with someone in the car and I tell him, you drive. Okay, where are we going? I don't know, we'll go to a place near Emirates Towers. So he will be going, uh, where to go now, right or left? Uh, take right, uh, then left, yes. right, left. And then when I reach, he will come and say, oh my God, man, why didn't you tell me that we're going to Emirates uh, Towers? Yes. I know another al alternative option where, you know, like there is a shortcut. So this is something, you know, like, it, you know, I start implementing it in my life with my network also. So the moment I network with someone that I want to learn, I tell them, you know, like, my name is Mohammed, and I would like to invite you to our humble office or I would like to visit you, or let's go for a coffee. Mm -hmm. I just want to hear your stories. Mm. I don't have anything to pitch. And the moment they hear these things, they yes. will appreciate it. Mm. Because they know that there is nothing. I'm not selling you anything. Yes. And I don't want you to buy something from me. Yes. So, you know, like, uh, you know, like it's, it's just for a coffee. And that's why I start building this amazing platform where people will just come. And all what you see in post, these are amazing introductions where, you know, like I like to hear stories and learn from everyone. Absolutely. So you have to be patient. You have to be clear of why you want to network with those people. And you have to do something in your life in order to have these kind of stories. When you network with people, you can share with that them something share. in common. Absolutely. 
What you mentioned is important. That GPS example was amazing in terms of being very clear. So you, not only are you empowering the person in terms of where to go because you're not having to tell them left, right, left, mm. but also it just gives them the clarity. Yeah. Which is a good segue to ask you that question on communication. When did you realize communication would be critical to your success? Because I have no doubt that it's played a huge factor, but I'm keen to know when did you become self-aware that, hey, my ability to communicate is critical to my growth, and then what did you do and how did you develop it? Without me thinking a lot, so that I will share with you the first thing came into my life sure. or came into my mind. I wanted to buy a sport car. Uh, what were you looking at? Porsche. Okay. So I Nine don't want to call it. 911? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're just good And cars. it's exactly, it's exactly, you know, like it is a 911, right? And I will tell you why. Let me, let me continue. Sponsored this. by Porsche. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> so I am a big fan of cars. Yes. I'm not technical. I don't know, you know, the horsepower and all these things. All what I know, I like this car. It's you appreciate amazing. It. I appreciate it as, you know, like the shape, the power, everything, right? Yes. But again, sometimes they say control is nothing without speed and speed is nothing without control. So speed is important anyway, right? And that's why I'm getting a Porsche. So <laughs> I went, and normally when I want to buy something, this is one of the secrets for your success in life, where my advice, my humble advice, don't share with every single person whenever you want to buy something in your life. Okay. Let it happen and then you can share. Because sometimes you will go and announce this and that, this and that. And I tried it. I'm not saying it out of, no, I'm saying You're it doing out, it out of experience. experience. Yeah. One time I wanted to get a great job while I was in Amlak. I can't, min I can't call the, uh, the, the other company name. I got a great position, great salary because the, uh, the head of that department was one of my VIP mm -hmm. and he offered me something. Sure. So what happened at that time? I start sharing, you know, like with my friends, with my family. Oh my God, I'm getting this, I'm getting that. So, and it was a big company, by the way. Yes. I said, this is a dream for me now. And because I start talking, yeah, I did uh, something to learn. I don't want to, it's a mistake. Sure. All right. I spoke with one person from the same group mm. because he was a friend. And I told him, listen, uh, and he was a, a really good friend. Listen, I'm getting this opportunity and I have just the final interview. I just want to ask you, what do you think? Because it's almost done. And he said, okay, you can do one, two, three. His answer was very basic. And guess what? I lost the opportunity. Mm. You know why? Because this person went to the head and he told him, why him? Why not me? I've been, I've been waiting for this. Apparently he was in different department. I was applying here, but apparently he was one of the people who applied for that job. Mm. And this person, he said, why? Why did you share with him? Because normally for such positions, we just want you to come and sign and start. That was a big learning for me. Yes. And by the way, I give lots of credit to my wife. Absolutely. She always, until yesterday night, don't share until you make sure that it is completed. Yes. And sometimes don't, then she share with your family. So this is again, you know, the, this is a story because it is linked with the Porsche. Yes. I don't like to, again, I, you know, like for my past, you know, like cars that I bought, I just, you know, like call my, my family and I tell them, can you come out? Uh, help me to get some stuff. Help the groceries. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they go out and they find a new car. Oh my God. And this, and that. So it was amazing. Uh, but again, let me share with you about this. Yes. Again, about the expectation. I've been doing it for the last maybe 15 years where I was surprising my family, surprising my best friend, uh, while who is, I told you, remember when I told you, if we want to pay, if we want to buy a paper, we invest together. Okay. So, you know, like our opinion is important. So he's like a mentor and I'm a mentor for him. Yes. For 15 years, I've been doing this with him <laughs> to buy cars and tell him come out, he will see the car and he will be surprised. 
apparently all his surprises were not a good surprise because you know like he started telling you know and and how did i find out one day he surprised me by buying a very nice plate number and then i told him why didn't you share with me why didn't you take my uh, my my consultation he said uh, you bought all these cars and you did ask me for my consultation i said yeah but i was surprising you <laughs> i did it he said exactly i am surprising you now <laughs> and seriously i said oh my god for the last 15 years you were really surprised in a bad way and he didn't tell me and then we start laughing right yes. so you know i start thinking that aha uh-huh, okay no maybe sharing with some people which are very very close is good so i'm not saying don't share with anyone share with two people that you really trust to take their opinion sure so this is what happened again with the Porsche mm. so i said i don't want to do all these mistakes the surprises and this and that so i said who is the right person for me to ask i went to my brother my younger brother who is a big fan and he he understand this is his like one of his passion cars. cars and i told him but still i didn't tell him that i'm buying a car i told him listen i am uh, confused with the range rover or porsche and this is four wheel and this is sport and he started giving me you know like the answers oh no here and there this is this advantage is advantage so i took his advice which is something that i want i know but i wanted to hear it from him which is the Porsche. And then, you know, like I start telling him that, all right, the decision is made. Uh, so very soon, maybe I would go and buy it. Although that I was about to put the down payment. Yes. He said, okay, but if you want to do this 911, which one? I said, 911. He said, 911, not the S. I said, no. He said, I swear to God. See these powerful words. I swear to God. If you buy the 911, and not paying the extra to make it the sport one, you will regret. I said, why? He said, because of, just trust me, go try the SS, see the engine, and see the SS, uh, sorry, the 911S. Yeah. And I told him, but it's like a 50,000 dirhams, you know, like extra. He said, trust me. Just try it. I swear to God, and my friend, this is what happened with him. So. I, I, I asked a few questions and without hesitating, I went to Porsche and I put 50,000 more for that S because I trusted him because mm. I knew that he is the right person. Yes. And at that time, one of my best friends, he bought the 911, the normal one. All what I can tell you that he's regretting until today. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps waiting to see what kind of upgrade to make his car. And there is there is a sport bottom in the car yes. where you know like to give you the extra so his bottom is always on to feel that he is you know like he is driving something you know like very powerful so this is something you know like you know to leverage the people that they know yes to ask the people that they know where they can support you and, and this getting expert advice exactly. so the communication skills what did you do to develop it communication because you're a good communicator yeah and some people say that, you know, good communicators are just born. I don't agree with that. You might be predisposed to be a better communicator, but communication is something that it's like a statue and you're chiseling at it and you become better and better. So I'm keen to know when were you aware of it, uh, which is how we got into the, the Porsche story, but also what did you do to develop it? What did I do? This is something that I, it's not about what did I do. I'm still doing and I will always do. Yes. It is everyday job. Because, you know, like today I am sitting with you, I'm learning from you. Yes. You know, like maybe the kind of questions and all these things. Again, it's like communication, right? Yes. It's a new experience for me in to talk about these things. Yes. So how to develop these things by li- by giving the opportunity to yourself to meet more people, mm-hmm. to, you know, like because the, the the moment you meet this person, you know their stories, yes. you network with them, and you have someone there for you yes. into this sector. Mm. So this is a great communication. So the moment someone comes to me by saying, Muhammad, listen, I have one, two, three, which I don't have. I would tell him, all right, because I create a great network and I have a great communication with everyone, then I will communicate with a friend of mine. And sometimes, 
you know, like linking those two people. Mm. If there is nothing in it for you, it's fine. You don't always have to think of what's in it for me. Sure. Do it, you know, the, do it for the sake of, you know, supporting a friend. Because, you know, like this is something I believe in. You support this person. If this person will not support you back, someone else will support you. Yes. And unfortunately, we see this where you, it's very evident. Like to me, it's very evident that you've got a mindset of connecting people, of helping, exactly. of reaching out, of communicating positive vibes. The other mindset is very, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, what's in it for me? What's like, in it for me? Otherwise, I won't do it. Exactly. And this is, this is for me, this is absolutely wrong. And this is where, you know, like, uh, you know, like, again, I like to meet people in order to, uh, you know, like, see how can I support you? Mm. Like, do you need any kind of support when it comes to mentoring? Are you here, you know, to, to, to find the cause why we are here? Mm. As long as it's introductory, it is amazing. At yes. least you know my passion mm. and you know the core business that I do. Yes. I know your passion, your story and the business that you do. Yes. Bye bye. No, Carlos, now we are linked. We are friends. Mm. Let's go have a coffee outside. This is the aim of that meeting because yes. it was identified. But the moment someone called me and tell me, Mohammed, uh, I would like, you know, like uh, I trust you. You have a great network. I'm looking for someone to share my stories with. Then the first thing will happen as you. Because I great, I have a great relationship with you and that's why we are sitting today. Yes. And then, you know, like the first thing will come into my mind is you. Yes. It's like the, you know, the Porsche, it's a story. Yes. Now this is like become a story later on. I will Absolutely. tell him, oh my God, by the way, I met one person before, I trusted him and we he gave me the opportunity to share my stories and vice versa, I gave him the opportunity to also learn from Tell him. Tell the story, sure. And you know, like, um, and it, it went everywhere, people learn, people interact, people agreed with me, people did not agree with me. Yes. But still- It started conversations. So it started the conversation. Yes. So this is my recommendation. 100. And when I link both of you, I will not call you like, hey, Kev, I'm sending you someone, what's in it for me if you charge him? And I will not tell the same guy because this is the trust I'm bringing. Yes. Now, later on, later on, this person or this person will come maybe to build something very big. Yes. It's a huge thing. This is, I will leave it, you know, with the flow. I don't say that, you know, you always have to communicate and you have to share with people for free. No, but when you identify that this is introductory, the first meeting you will realize you know, all the things. Is he a good person that you can make him as a friend and yes. family? Okay, fine, tick. Is he a good person, you know, to do business with him? Mm. Yes, and tick. Is this someone that I, you can feel proud to introduce him to other people in order to create something else? Yes. But if one of the three is not there, and I mean, he's not here, and he's from the three points, he's not one of them, then if you call him for another meeting, you will say, oh, sorry, I'm busy. Yes. Yes. And when you say I'm busy, in reality, no one is busy. Exactly. We are yes. all, we have the time, but it, we have a priorities. Okay. Is Absolutely. this like a priority for me to meet you? No. Mm. Because again, you are not a friend or family or there was no click. Or there is nothing wrong. Values. There yes. is nothing wrong. But I mean, there, you know, there is no click between you and I. Right. And there is no business opportunity to talk about. And there is nothing that I can take you and introduce someone. Yes. So why you want to meet me? So sometimes you have to evaluate, you know, your time. Because, yes. you know, your time today times is money. Yes. And you have to spend it, you know, with the right people, with the right team members in order to achieve your goal in life. That's right. So how do you manage your time? Because especially with what you're saying, you only have 24 hours a day. Yeah. Do you have a process? you know, perhaps habits or disciplines or, or ways of managing your time. Yes, absolutely. And if you don't, if you don't have, you know, like a small timeline in your life, then it will be a disaster. Yes. Okay. And sometimes you have to compromise by letting things go. Yes. That's part of it. So uh, when, when we, when I created the platform with my team and I don't say, I don't like to say actually I, it is me and the entire team. When we build this amazing platform and we start developing it, I start putting everything. Family, mm -hmm. and we always say family comes first. I have this, you know, amazing platform we, where we invested heavily to create this ecosystem. <clears throat> 
And then, you know, like you have the gym, which mm-hmm. is again part of your life because yes. it is, I don't want to, I'm happy with one pack, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Not the six packs. I'm fine. You look good though. Yeah. But as long, as long as, you know, like I go like every day or every two days, it's okay. fine. So, so there is, I have to put time for that. All what I did when I start seeing this is like, you know, like a timeline, the four things that I just mentioned, along with my side businesses. Mm-hmm. So I have, you know, like three, four uh, other companies that on the side. And I realized that in order to manage my time, I have to compromise. Yes. Can I compromise by family? Of course, no. Mm-hmm. Can I compromise by, you know, like utilizing my time, you know, like for, you know, only for ABC and the thing. I, it, it wasn't the right formula for me. So what I did, I said, this platform is my passion and my love and my dream is to make it a one-stop station. And I'm talking about Lead Ventures mm-hmm. to make it one-stop station. So I want to see myself for the coming 10 years making this one-stop station, you know, like beneficial for everyone. Mm-hmm. Like if you want any single thing, you come here and you will, I will, I will give you the solution. And I want to build bridges between countries to bring all these technologies again, you know, like if we if we want to say like you know like what is our why or what is my why i want to feel you know proud of bringing at least a small percentages things amazingly like technologies or anything bring it to this amazing country to feel proud that you know like i am participating with the vision of his royal hanship Hamad bin rashid that we want to be the first yes or the biggest or the highest or the tallest everything yes. with sss yes yeah but again, again, in order to achieve this big dream, you have to compromise. Yes. And now when, when we created this platform, I realized that I don't have time for my own companies as a partner. And then, believe it or not, just last week, I started selling, you know, like my shares. I, t- I said, guys, thank you very much. I love you so much. Now, I am not good for you mm. because I won't be able to give you time. And, so, and you're willing to make that sacrifice. Absolutely. So it was my decision that I told him, guys, I am not good for you now. I won't be able to support you when it comes to business development, to utilize my network and my experience. I cannot do it. So sometimes in life you have to have, you know, like you have to separate your emotional feelings towards something that you have built five or seven years ago and let it go. No yes. problem. Because now you have a bigger dream. Yes. But don't be so emotional. It's it's all right. Mm-hmm. Today, I just spoke with my business partner. I told him I'm selling one of our apartments, which is the first baby. I call it baby in downtown. Mm-hmm. It's one of the first projects in downtown, which I bought in 2007 or late 2006. And it is my baby. Yeah. But today, I, I told him, it's all right. I'm not into property management. I don't want to manage our portfolio anymore. Let's just sell it. It's fine. Emotionally, I am, you know, like, oh, my You've God. You've come to terms with it. Yeah, it's like, it's like a, you know, I'm so attached to it. Yes. But in, when it comes to business, it's all right. I have a big vision mm. that I really want to set the expectation with the companies that they want to enter the market here. I want everyone to be happy. I want to be all, I want them to expand their business, yes. make money, and I want to make money with them. Sure. So, but to build a great platform. So I'm giving time for this. I'm giving time for my two daughters, absolutely. Although that it is challenging sometimes because it, when, when I finish, you know, like uh, work, then I go to my gym. Sometimes I go to, uh, you know, to a, a cafe to meet my friends or my father. And then... I keep, you know, like one hour and a half to meet my two daughters. Mm. Sometimes it's very challenging because, you know, like that one daughter, she doesn't go to sleep. Uh, she doesn't go to a school yes. where I can catch her anytime. I can wake her up. And the other person, no, she's, you know, she's in school. So I make sure to see her 15, half an hour. Yes. Or, you know, like when I drop her, I make sure that I drop her early morning okay. because they have to interact with her. I have to, you know, like talk to her. And... I have I have an agenda like for example the, you know like Tuesday it's a family day this two days it is my father's day where we meet we play cards 
So again, you know, like uh, it, it, you plan in advance. I, I plan. It, yeah. it, you don't it, wake it is, up and go, "What am I doing today?" No, 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 no. I have everything is it's a standard. By finish by six o'clock or six thirty, sometimes seven o'clock. Then I go to the gym for forty five minutes. Then I go to it's either coffee shop to meet my uh, family or my friends, and then I go home. Mm. Sometimes my family, which is like my wife, so we put the kids to uh, to our families, take care of them. We go enjoy a nice dinner. So I make sure that I, I you You're know, I give. In the I of course like because I always get the blessing from my wife. Yes, it is absolutely important, absolutely important. So I like I don't even call her. You know, like she's my wife. No, she's my really best friend. Yes. So she is a person where she is a good listener. And, you know, like I always feel free to share with her everything and vice versa. Mm. And this is something very important in the relationship because, you know, we all we all know happy wife, happy life, happy life. Absolutely. Right? And this is something that I have experienced. And yes, it is working very nicely. Yes. And like anything, it requires the investment. Absolutely. Yes. Which is time, attention. And and to be more realistic for people to hear. It's not like, you know, like our life is 100%, you know, like going smooth every single day. No, 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 no. Nobody's life. Like, do we fight, me and my wife? Absolutely. You know, like, oh my God, you are late. You were supposed to come at eight o'clock. Now it's 10 o'clock, they, they slept this. It's fine. As yes. long as there is a communication and justification, I'm sorry, you know, this is what happened, one, two, three. Not to be, you know, like, they have this ego. Yeah, but I did this. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Just communicate. Because, you know, like, one of the things that I always also share with, with, with my relatives, with my family, that I think 90% of, the, of any problems between two couples, I would say 10%, 90% is a misunderstanding and 10% is the cause. So if you just communicate in a very nice way and you deliver your message correctly and without yelling, without do this and do that, then just hold the 10%. Mm. But normally, you know, when someone is angry, he goes home and he wants to get this angry out, anger out, and then he go and he speak with the, with the wife. She will say something and he will start attacking. Yeah, but there's this. Yeah. In reality, there is nothing. She did not say anything. Yes. And I always come up with a strategy if you want to talk about families, and this is again a great advice that I have done it, you know, before I, when I got married, I told my wife, listen, whenever we fight, I, I always like to create things by my own. So I said, I created the new system between you and I, before we have anything, although that I'm a big believer when it comes to law of attraction, and I don't like to talk about something because if I talk about something, it will happen. Yes. But I had to, at that time, tell her about this. And I told her, listen, whenever we fight, I will shake hands with you. Mm. And you have to shake hands with me. Yes. Which means we will not wait for the second or third and fourth day. You'll come to peace. We'll come to peace immediately. Mm. That's, that's a good rule to have. And believe it or not, it worked very nice for the first year. <laughs> 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 so, so the first year I was going was, to say this is a rule of life <laughs> for the first year. This is, you know, the first year. It is, you know, like it worked very hard. The second year became very challenging. Where you will, you know, you will raise yeah, your hand. Shake. Yes, <laughs> but you know, like shake. even if she shakes, you know, like she will just take <laughs> it. So you know, like starting gradually again. Set the expectation. It's fine. You did a problem or you did a mistake. You have to solve it. Yes. So things, you know, like. The, in reality, the first year was easy because there were no kids. Yes. The second year, people have to understand that those different you know, dynamics, like, those, you know, which I, I don't know how to call them, you know, like the minimum, we call them princes. Yes. When they give a child to be welcome on this earth, it's a big responsibility. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes I dare you, if you can sit with your baby for three, four hours, you cannot. Mm. So God gave them the power in order to, you know, like to compromise in their body and their life and, you know, to give the support for, for this baby. We, what, what, what do we do? We finish work at six, go gym meet with our friends for coffee, and then go for two hours, even if we see them, 
to give them the love for two hours, maybe one hour and the second hour we start saying, oh my God, I don't know what happened. Yeah. So, you know, like we have to understand, and this is my message to everyone, we have to understand that, you know, like wives, they have a big responsibilities. And sometimes when the second year, if I shake my hands, if she doesn't shake her hands, there is a reason which we have to identify. Yes. There are reasons which she is going through something that there is no sleep. Yes. And this is where I will compromise by not saying, oh my God, you know, like the first year, you know, the moment I start shaking your hands, you were shaking my hands, now you're not shaking my hands. Yes. And now we have a problem. No, we don't have a problem. Mm. The problem with me that I have to adapt, that now the responsibilities on her is higher. Yes. But at the same time, see, she also has to understand that the expectation from my side is also increased. Why? Because if I was doing this income for both of us, now I have to do this income. Mm -hmm. So if I also come and yell at you or had ha, had any kind of uh, argument, it's fine because I had a bad day today. Yes. Communication. 100%. You have to communicate with the person. And I received many advices before I got married that, Hamad, listen, don't share with your wife anything related to money. She doesn't have to know about your money because, you know, like if you are in a bad terms you might be down and you don't need this uh, you don't have to share with her you know like uh, everything that you do in your life especially for work and when you know like when i got married i got married because i wanted her to be my wife but my wife and my my friend at the same time yes she's my partner yes she is a real partner yes you made a choice it was your decision Exactly. And I start sharing with her sure. every single thing. And it is amazingly fine. People, sometimes when I share with people, they are really surprised. Oh my God, she knows about your financial and this and that. Yes, she knows. Mm -hmm. Because this is the art of communication. Yes. So she has to know that I've gone through something very, very, you know, like challenging today. Yes. Whether financial or whether someone, something, you know, with an employee, because the moment I share with her, she will understand yes. why I am behaving like this. Yes. And as long as I communicate and I justify, so she has to understand and vice versa. Yes. But when is the real problem? When I share with her and she doesn't understand, this is again another thing. Yes. That's what you have different values. Absolutely. Yeah. What you said reminded me of um, what I heard Brene Brown share on a podcast, which to me was really interesting. And that is marriage isn't a 50-50 partnership, which is interesting because this, the term you hear is marriage is a 50-50 partnership. And she says it's not a 50-50 partnership. And I'm making this point because of what you said, the importance of communication and the importance of understanding. Because she said there are times, and this is how she's had a successful and long marriage. On any given day, she'll say, hey, I'm feeling 50%. And her husband goes, I'm feeling 50%. And they're at 100. That's okay. They've got each other. There are sometimes she goes, I'm feeling only 20% today. He goes, it's okay. I've got 80%. I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. Right? This is their way of communicating and understanding, which I thought was so simple but powerful. Okay, it's 100%. I got this. Maybe the next day he will be at 35. She goes, it's okay. I've got 65. We'll carry it through. So every day they have to be at 100%. If on any given day she goes, I'm 20, and he goes, man, I've only got 25, and the total is only 45, they cancel everything for the rest of the day. They got time out. Let's go out and have dinner. Let's gather our energy. Let's do what we need to do. Let's bring it back up to 100% and continue. And I thought, wow, this is so simple, so powerful. And how many marriages could have been saved if they just implement this simple thing? Which comes down to exactly what you said, communicating and understanding. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and by the way, I'm glad to hear this philosophy or this kind of formula yes. or strategy because I do it, but not in a percentage way. Yes. So I always give an indication to my wife yes. by sending a WhatsApp easily and quickly. By the way, I'm in a bad mood today. It yes. had one, two, three. So I already give her the, you know, like the, the negativity up. that, you know, like, be careful. I'm not in a good mood, which is fine. Yes. So, you know, like, one day, second day, third, fourth, when you live with someone, then, you know, like, that's it. They will understand you without you even talking. Yes. And this is, you know, like, tomorrow, I mean, 
this kind of philosophy, maybe it's good for, for a person where she just got married, mm. where they communicate by percentages, but the real partnership and the real love, when do you just, you know, like from the time I talk to her and she tell me what's wrong? Yes. She will understand and she will feel it. Yes. Right? So this is something, you know, like it comes by time and it comes with when you have a great relationship with your partner. Yes. How did you know she was the one? Like what values did you share? Because this is how we are attracted to a life partner mm. or perhaps friends or the people we like. It's because we share similar values. Yes. What would we say your top three values? For for my wife or for, for so anything um if they're different then perhaps we could break it down so perhaps in a relationship what All were right. the values where you either communicated or you understood you have the same values because this is what makes all right for a long-term partnership. if i want to answer by giving you this specific answer for to combine wives best friends yes and any any opportunity which might come i always look at the click mm -hmm. and this is something that i'm known of okay so you know people knows me that ah did it happen is the click is there but, yeah so for example and um, uh, you know with all my love and respect to the people who were sitting on the seat before you mm. they came and they sat with me and they said Hamad, we would like to do these kind of you know like uh, you know like a video to share your stories believe it or not there was no click yes right and how do I create this click? I don't have any identification for that. Mm. This is natural, I believe. Yes. I, again, to go back to the energy, law of attraction, all these things plays a big role in my life. Mm. So I believe in these kind of energies that, you know, like, all right, I like Kevin. He has something, you know, like to share. Mm. I feel comfortable. Yes. And I want to see him again. Yes. So there is there is nothing that I can tell you that these are the things. It's just just the click. Yeah, the click. And the, the click sometimes I'm sure hundred percent. And you will tell me that you are absolutely right. And I'm sure hundred percent for the audience to hear this, they will agree with me. You meet many people in your life. You talk to them for the first time, and you tell them, "Oh my God, man! I feel that I know you for the last ten years." Yes, it's true. Right? It's true. And again, this is not luck. Yes. This is, you know, like, and, you know, something which is happening, you know, like, it's it's happening with me for the last maybe four or five or ten years, I don't know, but I didn't know that this is the word for it, which is the energy. Yes. It is real. It's real. I can't share with you things because you will think that, you know, uh, you know, like, I'm, uh, you know, like a magician where I, I know what is happening, but, you know, like, I swear to God, today, just today, I was thinking of one person. One person, and I'm saying, I swear to God again, and he messaged me uh, a voice note. Yes. Out of nowhere. Yes, I'm a big believer. So sometimes yes. you can attract these things. Absolutely. One day, for the people that they don't, maybe they they are doubting these things, you know, like when it comes to games, I will tell all of them, come, please meet Sammy, my brother. Okay. Where we always play cards, and there is like 10 cards in front of me, and, you know, like I say, for example, you have to throw this card somewhere and you have to finish, for example, it's either here or the other nine options. Yes. And I just, you know, like if I don't think about it, I don't think about it. I will just tell, you know, my brother, bro, I'll finish here. So I flip the card and I finish there. Seriously, one day I want you and I want any from the audience to go and speak with my brother. It's either my brother or my best friend, Wael, or whoever with plays wife, cards with, or my, with my, my wife, Sarah. Yes. Not about the cards, but about different things. Yes. So it is something, you know, like powerful. And you have to discover this in yourself. Maybe now you are, you know, you tell you told me that yes, I, I know. I'm I believe believer, it. Yeah. Some people don't feel it. Yes. And that's why it is like a gift. Sometimes in life we feel that we're victims of situations. It's not in my control. It's not in my control. And there are many things that are not in our control. But what is in our control is the energy we put out because, or what we look for, kind of like buying a 911 S and then you start noticing it after you've bought it or after you've shown interest yeah. in it. Was there a time where you realized, hey, I don't know the name of it, but I understand the feeling. Absolutely, absolutely. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. In 2002, 
I remember, but I feel so sad mm. to share with everyone in the world that I lost that amazing notebook where I used to draw. I like to draw, by the way. Okay. Where, you know, like I used to go in one room, put music, put one picture and start drawing. So that was, again, one of my passions. Yes. Right. I love it. And at that book, in that book, I just, you know, I don't know how it came. There was no YouTube, no positive quotes to learn from. Yes. No great leaders to be, you know, like there for you where you can reach them within a minute like today. Yes. So I just got a paper and I just, you know, like I drew a line. And I just said one, two, three, four, five, six, until 10, 10 years. And I said, what do I want? What do I want to achieve in my life? And to be honest, maybe the terms of what I'm sharing today, maybe it was not there. What do I want to achieve? This term, I did not even know that it is it exists, achieve. Yes. But all what I wanted is like, what is my life? What's gonna what what do I want? Mm. Like I am a biker, I like motorbikes. Okay. Let me just write down. Yeah. And today, you know, like many people, you know, despite that there are reminders every day from many people that, you know, draw a line, do this and do that, right? Then things that you want to achieve, people are not doing it. Mm. They don't believe in it. And again, it's not for everyone. You don't do it because you don't believe that this is really powerful. Yes. Right? Yes. But this is something that it happened with me, which I said I want to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, even for my, like every single thing. And I swear to God, it was like happening like a dream. What were some of the things you wrote? Achieving where, you know, like, okay. And I, I, was think, I was thinking this in, for example, year number three that I want to achieve at that time. Because remember, I wanted to support my family big time. Yes. I wanted to achieve something in order to make good money from a good place. So I, I stopped taking my, from my father or my mother and, and I start giving. Yeah. So I will not lie and tell you something, you know, related to anything else. No, I will tell you like one of the things that I wanted to achieve is like by third year, I start sponsoring my family. Yeah. Where I start, you know, like supporting them big time. And to go back to that moment, I remember that one of the years I told my sister, Rawan, I told her, Rawan, I feel... I feel good and I feel bad for you. I was looking at her. She said, why the good and why the bad? I told her, I feel so happy for you that everything that you need in your life is there. Mm. Like, you know, you drop the mobile today, broken, you can get another one. Everything is, everything is there for you. Mm. But I feel bad because you don't see the value. You don't know the real value of what you just bought because you did not buy it. Yes. You know, like we got it for you as a gift. Yes. But, you know, like I told her, I swear to God, I remember one day I went to a shop and my I was with my brother Abdullah and with my mother. We went to that shop and I told my mother, I want to buy this T-shirt. And at that time, I remember and many people were relate. There was, you know, like the uh, basketball team, uh, Chicago, uh, Chicago Bulls. Bulls yes. And that was, you know, like the, you know, like the, the T-shirts and everything, yeah, the yes. cap and yeah. everything. And I've seen it and I love it. Yes. And I told my mother, mom, I want to buy it. She said, we don't have money now. Let's wait another week. Maybe your father will come. And then I told the guy, can you keep it for me? He said, uh, no, but maybe you will find it. I took it and I hide it. And you're talking about 20 years, maybe. In the store. 20 years or maybe more. So, you know, like. It's not a proper one, you know, yes. it's like a shop where there are hangers everywhere and even the, in the door. So I put it somewhere and, you know, like after one week and I came, I found it. The first thing I did when I got the permission from my mother, I went to the corner and I got it. I was so happy. All right. I was grateful. And all what I can tell you, something, maybe, yes, people will hear it, you know, it is so emotional, but I remember that I slept hugging yes. <laughs> the t-shirt. Yeah. This is the real value. Yes. Which is not here today. Mm. Many people, they don't feel that this is a value. This is a gift from God. Yes. And this is my, now, my thing, my aim or my 
my role to my sister is to keep sharing with her and to keep reminding her that mm. this is something that you would have to earn. This is something you have to do. This is this, this is that. So to go back to, you know, like when did I know about the law of attraction? The moment I drew that line and I start seeing things are happening and happening. And this is where I, I knew, I think in 2006, that there is something called the law of attraction. Yes. When the secret, the secret came out, yes. So the secret, I said, oh my God. So this That's is what I've been going through. Yes. And then recently, I don't want to tell you like, you know, like maybe one year, maximum one year, I start engaging with people by talking, you know, like the, you know, the terms energy, energy. And they start telling me, I can feed the energy. Yes. You have this and you have that. And I didn't know that this energy, but I felt it. Yes. And I start related, you know, to all what, what they are saying that yes. it is real it is true and and it, it is real and it is true you have an amazing vibe yeah i remember from the first time i met you you have an amazing vibe my brother said the same thing uh, thank um, you very as much. well um you also have a great sense of fashion yes uh, because i remember seeing you in that uh, blue condora and i was like boy he looks fly he looks really good yeah um have you always had a sense of fashion uh are you into fashion see again i'll tell you this is one of my passion yes you know, I'm passionate about everything. You know, like, let me let me tell you something, but let me tell you why I did not develop myself into that thing. Sure. Or why I did not invest into that thing. I am into fashion big time. Yeah. I mean, one day I'll just show you, or one, I'll show you some of by the profile where you see, you know, like when I wear suits, I wear them with, the, with love. Yeah. So I like all these colors. And when I wear a suit, it is full the clip the clip here the cufflinks oh, and man. things have to be matched and and i remember that one day i met my friend the guy which i told you that i met him here in emirates towers eduardo from italy mm. for just a cup of coffee we became a friend and when i visited there i told him about my passion and he told me okay let's do this together where I will send you someone, you know, Italian, they yes, are fashion, right? Absolutely, yeah. So I wanted to do this business, you know, to only for uh, tailored suits. Nice. So, you know, like, am I into this fashion? Yes, this is one. Am I into uh, instruments like, uh, you know, the drums or piano or these things? Absolutely. You what, know, like... What do you play? Piano. Okay. But with one hand. All Not right. two hands. The two hands. One hand, I can I can play whatever you want or things that I know. Yeah. But with the two hands, I create my own. So I had this, you know, like Libras. They yeah. are, you know, like creative. sensitive and creative <laughs> and emotional. Yeah. So I start doing, you know, my own. So the, per the the you know the second person when they hear it, they say, "What is this? What are you playing?" I say, "I don't know. <laughs> Created by me." <laughs> All right. So this new, is new a album by Muhammad Al -Bahan. A new album singing, by the way. Okay. Uh, you know, like I will just open something for you. And by the way, you might be really amazed. So all these things, I like to experience things. Yes. And and I, you know, like I heard it from many, many people that they, they you know, like, and I just received a phone call before uh, two days of the weekend where uh, a friend of mine, he told me, man, I have to bring you with me with the show. You know, your voice can be, you know, like a killer. You have to come. And this is, was one of the opportunity in reality to yes. go and speak, you know, on radio, this and that, because they told me that you have that voice. Now, if you, if you notice, I mentioned many things, right? Yes. Which I have love for this. I love. And I think that this is related, you know, to, uh, you know, like thanking God in a, in, in a way that I have all these things. Yes. I love life. Yes. I like to enjoy life. And that's why maybe I see everything is positive. Mm. I know that I can wear something and I am passionate about, you know, wearing something nice. I can turn it into the business. Mm. Uh, you know, like I like uh, drums and all these things. I got a friend of mine who is a great, you know, he has a guitar. I can create these things where I, you know, I can, I can create a business. Mm. So when you have these kind of energy and you have the right people, and you have the skills, you can turn it into the business. Mm. Now, my mind is always turning these things into two things. It's either business or either, again, as I said, black or white. So it's either that I do the fashion or I and give it full. But if I give it full, then what will happen to my other companies? If I do this kind of, for example, piano, what will happen if I take these courses? What will happen to 
you know, when I go and take my motorbike to enjoy or play basketball or, or, or. Mm. So I decided that I don't want to be an expert when it comes to drums or piano. I don't want to have the fashion. I don't want to have, but I want to have peace of every single thing. So that's why today you tell me, Muhammad, let's go and race karting. Oh, let's go. I will beat you, man. Uh, let's play cards. I will beat you. And I like these <laughs> yeah, you know, energetic things. Yeah. Uh, very, very. <laughs> so, you know, like yeah. basketball. Let's go and play basketball. <laughs> Am I an expert in basketball? No. But, you know, I like these kind of challenges. But I'm a good player, by the way. Yes. But he's, you know, a, he's a very good player. <laughs> All right. So we have, now we, we have <laughs> a big challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that, you know what? I'm not going to be, you know, investing really, really good time for something where, you know, like I will eliminate any other points because if my love and passion went into this point then those will be dropped automatically because mm. i would spend more time yes. in order to develop myself to become an expert into that thing that's why i feel that you know like i want to be free you know like pieces here and there yeah it reminds me of uh, arnold schwarzenegger mm. i think it was 15 or 20 years that he couldn't do horse riding he loved horse riding he couldn't go skiing. He loved to ski, but he couldn't do any of that. And people, they don't realize that it was a sacrifice because these were things he wanted to do, but he couldn't do it because he was in Hollywood. And part of Hollywood is you cannot risk injury, otherwise you're out of business. So he couldn't do the things that he loved. And it's, it reminds me of what you're saying. We could have a lot of passions, but we have to be clear about the direction we want to go, the vision we want to take. We can play here and there a basketball game or a card game, but you cannot pursue it at 100%, otherwise then how are you going to put 100% here? Where's the rest of it to go for the platform that you have a vision for? That's why it is challenging. I had to take before six months of making lead venture where we are today, I had to take maybe three weeks off. I told my people, I just told two people yes. from my team members that listen, I am located into that coffee shop and that is my new office for three weeks. Because I wanted to know what is next. I have a great opportunities, a great people, a great network. Yes. It is, you know, like it is a dream. Yes. And I start receiving lots of inquiries from here. From there. different directions. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know what I came up with? I learned from that three weeks one thing. I learned to say no. Mm. That's it. So I start saying no. Sometimes it kills me. Yes. Where, you know, like, oh, my God, it's oh, a great to, opportunity. Yes. But no. Mm. And I'm very honest with them. And by the way, they will, love, they will love you more when you tell them that no, because I don't have, you know, like, imagine someone is telling you, uh, Kevin, I will pay you X, Y, Z, but I want you to do this with me and this and that. And you're getting money. Yes. Yes. Money is amazing. Yes. Everyone loves money. Yes. But, you know, like, if you don't have the time and the, you know, like, uh, the, 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 the right resources, you, you just say no. But in reality, if I want to create the time, and if I want to, even if I don't have resources, I can get resources, yes. outsource people, and I can get the job yes. smartly. And I can get the money. Mm. But sometimes you have to say no. Yes. Not to say yes to every single thing that you come up with. Yes. It's very important. It's, it's having that clarity. Yes. Which, which is of huge importance. What you want. I've got a few closing questions. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you've um, invested the time. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, especially when you're running a busy schedule, and I know you're a busy man, so I'm very grateful. And um, I really believe that the viewers and listeners would would have benefited immensely, beyond measure. I, I, so, I hope so. Beyond I measure. So. I, I mean, just my brother and I, two out of millions that will benefit from this. I'd like to ask you, before my quick fire questions, tips on suits. I might as well get it from a guy who's into fashion. Yeah. If I want to go and get a couple of good suits, what would be some tips I need to take into account so I can look my best? All right. Uh, first, what I will be asking you, what is the occasion? So I will start question, asking you questions. Do so you say, I want something versatile so I can utilize it. No, you wanted something for fashion. You're like, are you going for, you know, like... Like uh, I'm on stage and wedding. I'm speaking. Ah, speaking? Yeah. And, but then maybe then there's going to be a networking event, which I might not enjoy, but I have to be there for 15 minutes. All right. Before how I do leave. you normally, how do you normally look, you want to look like, you know, the, uh, the... Uh, hip. Yeah. Hip. Look good. 
not you know, like not colors. The, yeah, you like colors. Yeah, but you don't like to be you know like formal you know like you know suits with the with the tie. Not a so, penguin. I don't want to be a penguin. All right. Yeah. All right. My, I think, and maybe you can try it if you wear. A blue suit. Okay, I like blue. All right, yes. and it should be slim. Of yes, course. Sir. yeah. I'm uh, not very tall. It's fine. Yeah, so it slim. Yeah, slim. And everything is slim. Yes, with a black shirt. Oh, oh. With a black shirt. If you want to make it more sexier, you just put the uh, the scarf, which is the handkerchief they say. Okay, the black yeah, shirt. I didn't see coming. Okay. Yeah. Well, also black. Also black. black. Oh, also black. oh, I can imagine this. If you want to look smart, by, by the way, because this is something also, again, good. Yes. You can also wear black tie, which will put you in a different, even if you, I mean, this is will present your personality mm. as well. Yes. I mean, even if you want to, uh, to be, you know, the, the hip style as well as, you know, something formal. Yes. Try it. Funky. Wear the, yes, wear the suits. Thin tie. Uh, the uh, thin tie. Yes. With the handkerchief of black, black with the with the black shirt. All right. Trust me, see the uh, see the messages that you will be receiving let, let, of let, having let, that outfit. I already like the look. Yeah. I'll go get one and then I'll take a picture and send it to you. I hope so that you know, like it will, but it will suit you hundred percent. I'm sure hundred percent. I'm sure your kids will learn a lot from you. But if you were to only be able to share one thought or one tip or one habit or discipline that you could leave with them to give them the best chance at living their lives to its fullest potential. What would be that one thing? You know, like what I like about your question. So while you are asking the questions, I feel that the answer is there. Okay. Because I don't like to create answers. I yes. told you, and I, I would like to tell everyone, the yes. whole audience, guys, I'm not a camera guy. I don't like to be prepared because many people would, might, might think today that, you know, like, oh my God, but this answer, he was supposed to say this. Or maybe my wife, if she sees now the video, she will come and say, why did not say this? This is wrong. This was it's just okay. been all natural. It's okay. It's natural. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm a human. I mean, yes. we all do mistakes. Even if I say a statement where is something was wrong, it's fine. Yes. But this is real me. Yes. So this is something, you know, like, because I realize that whenever someone asks, people sometimes will pretend and ask, you know, like, answer a very smart question. Yes. But what I realized while with your smart questions that always, you know, before you continue the, uh, the, the, the questions, the answer is there. And the moment you ask something that I would like my two daughters to have something from me. And this is again, one of my secret that I want to share with everyone is giving, mm. giving. I admire especially when the time where I don't have, this maybe has nothing to do with business or with me being a person or, or whatever. I enjoy and I try to keep it a target, even if, if it's one dirham, five, ten dirhams. Today you give to any poor people. Yes. This is, will teach them a lot because it will always remind them that, you know, wherever we reach, we are all human. Yes. Today we are on this stage. Tomorrow everyone will be in one place. Yes. And we know where is that place. Yes. So this is something that I'm teaching Naya, especially Naya, because she's four years and six months. Kenzie's still one year, one year and two months. So I always teach her, please, Baba, you have to give. You have to give. And now she start, you know, she start, uh, you know, like engaging with people. Yes. Now sometimes, you know, like it is again challenging. <laughs> Where you know I give her something and she will take everything and she will start giving. <laughs> so, but again, uh, so, so I want beautiful. them, I want them to learn because this is, I, I believe, if everyone in this world start giving one dollar or one dirham, there will be no poor people. Yes, and this is something that I I admire on teaching my 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 princes and starting from my wife. This is important. Sometimes I don't like to take credits. Because you know the credit, I'll give it to my mother, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to my wife, because she spends more time with them. Yes. So sometimes my, my message should not go to them only. Yes. No, it should go to my wife. Yes. Because you are there twenty four hours. So my two secrets: one is to give every day and try it, and you will see. Feels you know, so like good. you will see the result. Yes. I will not say anything, but you will really see the result, and do it secretly. 
without sharing with anyone. You don't have to tell the world that, you know, you are doing this. If you want to share it, like now today, I'm sharing it because it's something work with me. And, you know, like it's good for me. And, you know, like right. I cannot, I cannot keep it to myself. I want everyone to try it. No need to tell me what is the result. You can try it yourself and yes. you'll see the result. So yes. this is one. And second, always have the blessing uh, from three people, father, mother, and your wife. Mm. If you have your father, if you have your mother, this is the best thing in your life as of today. Absolutely. This is the blessing. If they are not here, so our prayers to all of them. And I always, I always, again, one of the secrets that I do. So I'm sharing you with a, with a secrets, a real secrets that I do mm. every single day, if not every single day, at least every two days, every day or three times a week minimum. I pray only, you know, one prayer before I go to sleep and I start thanking God of me being healthy, of me having my family, mm. having my parents. I am in good health. I can move my hands. Yes. You know, sometimes you have to really think, you know, being grateful for all this is, you know, granted. Yeah, many people, you know, our prayers with them, they hope to raise their hands. They hope if they can go to the restroom, you know, alone. Yes. So they have to see, you know, like if you feel that you are today, you are poor or you don't have this. And no, you have everything in life. Last week, someone asked me, how, how are you? I said, I'm over the moon. Yes. And they asked me, oh my God, did you close the deal? No. I'm alive. I woke up today smiling and saw my family. Yes. So sometimes, you know, you are not poor. But this is one factor, but not everything. Mm. So have a blessing. Before I go, I can just to, you know, like to show the world that, you know, whatever, I, whatever I'm saying is, is real. I will show you two things, okay? My mother, I'm calling her, like this is uh, in Arabic, Allah yahmiki ya ummi. So it's, uh, this is her name. It's not her name. Her yes. name is Randa. Yes. But I'm calling my mother, may God protect you, mother. Yes. So every time she calls, I pray for her. Yes. What a great and, way. Yes. And see, this is today. It's either that she will send me. Yes. Or I will send time. her. And this is today at 8.09. Yes. You go. To the second person. That's fantastic. So my father, I called him in the other WhatsApp, uh, Allah Yahdik, which is something, you know, for other people who will understand that they will laugh. Yes. <laughs> because my father normally is uh, very hyper. And, you know, because he's, uh, yani, may God give him more help because he's an angry person. He's hyper. Yes. So he gets angry quickly. It's passionate. So, and he gets angry quickly. So whenever you do something, and that's why I tell him, Allah, yadik, please, uh, come on, man. So that's why, you know, I pray every single day. So when I see him, when I see him, I always tell him, Allah, yadik, Allah yadik. So something is like good prayer. Yeah. So again, this is at 8.14. And then where I told him, you know, like I told him, like, good morning. I just wanted to, uh, today, uh, to, to tell you good morning and this and that. And today, if you want, we can meet. That's so so nice. the secret. Share with your parents. Just tell them good morning. Let, let, let just get the positive vibes from them yes. and the prayer because it is so important. And of course, you have to go out from home, you know, with with love from your uh, from from your wife herself. Yes. And then you know, like just start your the day with this one. That's it. Yes, we take it for granted. Absolutely, we take it for granted. I'll never forget. To this very day, I still feel sad that I took my father for granted. He passed away in 2004. Sorry for that. Um, God rest his soul. Thank you. Um, and to this very day, because it's a shock because I thought I always would have him and I never thought it would happen to me. But the lesson I learned from that is you can't take anything for granted. So we have a WhatsApp group. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement immediately two things. <laughs> I'm going to change from mama to God bless you, mom, so I can always yes. pray for her. Yeah. yeah. And actually, we have a family group, WhatsApp, but I'm going to make sure I actually implement a daily message. Wow. wow. Uh, thanks is, to you, man. Because you are touching my, you know, I'm, I'm so emotional. Yeah, you know? me and too. This I is, is true. And this is, yeah, seriously. And this is something, you know, the reason why I came up with this strategy for myself yeah. is because I always, always, before I, you know, like I see my mother or I call her, I think that today is my last day. Mm. Not their last day. It is my last day. So I always 
want to share with them whatever is inside and I make sure that I give them whatever they need, even if I can, but I have to share with them is for something I don't want to regret. Yes. And I always say, you know, like God, you know, like sometimes it's selfish. Like I want to go first because I don't want to suffer. But in, the, in reality, no, let uh, they should not suffer as well. Yes. And that's why my message to everyone, if you have your mother and your father, you really have to appreciate every single day as if you are not living today. Yes. Do your level best because the moment you have this blessing, man, and this is something, I mean, uh, it is, you know, like I, I can't look at you, man, but all what I can, all what I can say to you, man, really, my prayer, I will include your father because when I pray that thing, which I told you about, yes. I start with my myself for my health, start with my wife and my kids, start with my family, mm. and I start with the poor with the poor people that yes. God. This is because the minimum I can do for them. And I start Send them mentioning prayer. some names for the people where they passed away. Yes. So I, I mention names. And this is something will definitely, definitely include may God bless his soul. Thank you. And he is I, I'm sure hundred percent. If he's here today, he will feel so proud to see, you know, two brothers are here. Yeah, I hope so. And, and sharing something to the world. I yes. mean, you are doing a phenomenal job. Something, you know, like not everyone have the energy to do this. Yes. So he will be absolutely so proud. Thank and you. anyway, sooner or later, the real life is not here. That's true. Somewhere else, we will be meeting them. We'll you know, be like together. Soon. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. I only have one final question. Uh, I've, I'd love to catch up many more times, sure. but for this session, one more question, because I know your meeting is waiting for you. Uh, in a world where everyone's distracted and it's very tough to get their attention, if you had 60 seconds of the world's attention, what would be your message in any direction? All right. Just my, my message to everyone. One, we are facing really challenging times now nowadays when it comes to financial because you know sometimes people will say you know financial is not everything no financial is very important. it's important have faith try different strategies but with focus mm. uh don't waste time with with people where you know like you think that he's the right person for you no, no do your make you know like your due diligence that this is the right thing for me to do be extremely positive Stay away from negative people. Mm. Today you have into in this world is divided into two, negative and positive. Mm. It is challenging nowadays, but I don't look at this. I look at the positive mm. and always be surrounded by smarter people than you. Yes. Where you can learn from them every single day. Yes. This is my message. And two more things in order to succeed in life. Have a target and have a deadline. Yes. Don't keep everything open. Just say from this moment, this is my dream and I want to achieve it by all means. And in order for me to achieve it, this is what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four, five. Mm. And this is my target. And this message, again, is for everyone not to forget themselves. Mm. Meaning I work so hard. I support, you know, like my family with a proud. And I try to do my level best to support, you know, like, some certain people okay with, with, with my love because this is something i'm not making them a favor this is part from your heart of, this is from my heart mm. and i hope that everyone will do the same with their relatives so start with their relatives not to start with people that you don't know yes start with your start relatives with because you will find some people from your family that they need money and it's okay ask your brother maybe he needs why to go and invest xyz for someone who needs money so give your family first and, get, and then go there uh, so I'm a big believer. If I'm supporting my family and I'm supporting my parents and I'm supporting, you know, some, you know, like poor people that they need money, then I have to reward myself. Mm. Today, if someone sees me where, you know, like driving the Porsche, no, they should know and understand that it took me time and effort and energy and money and thinking of when is the day to buy this car? Mm. And I bought it to reward myself. Mm. The reason why I'm mentioning this yes. is I link myself. In order to achieve something, I link myself to a target for my personal target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's in it for, for everyone? It's, you know, like to, you know, to have amazing story X, Y, Z. Yes. But I want to reward myself. Mm. Don't forget yourself. You have to reward yourself.
Muhammad has dropped so many gems. Please watch this video a second time. Please, if you're listening to the podcast, listen to it a second time. I guarantee you that you will get so much more out of it the second time. For those that would like to dive into your world, if they'd like to follow you, if they'd like to find out about Lead Ventures, uh, perhaps if it's a, you know, something they'd like to pitch to you or yeah. drop to you, we'll place all the links. Um, but is there a specific platform uh, that you're active in that they could follow you? Yeah, see, the only platform, as I said, which I am really, really focused as Muhammad is my LinkedIn, mm -hmm. which is Muhammad Al Banna. We'll place all the details. Folks, there was so much out of today. As you know, our um, show has nothing to do with showing off. We hope that with every episode, we have conversations like we had today with uh, Muhammad, where, um, thank you, really appreciate it. Where we, help, we, we hope to help you get inspired, get informed, and get going. And I'm certain we were able to do this uh, with this episode. Countless gems. Uh, you've been very gracious with your time. Uh, we got to know Muhammad on a personal level. Just go out there and implement one or two of the gems that were shared and your life will be completely different. Remember that if nothing else and following on what Muhammad said, remember the message of whatever is happening in your life, be kind, be ambitious, be grateful. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. This is How Do They Do It? Thank you so much. Man, that was thank you. That was awesome. That Habibi. was great. Allah, thank much you appreciated. Much. Thank I'm gonna check in, but I want to give you a hug, man. Habibi, two brothers. Good.